Before we start this episode, we want to let you guys know about a new addition to our platform called My Karma is Beautiful. We want to highlight some of our favorite new artists um, with a live performance in our studio. First one being Black Odyssey with many more to come. Um, something I, I know we're, we're excited about. Very excited about it. Uh, we get to have our own jam sessions in our studio, kick it with some of our favorite artists, old and new. Yeah. Um, and just have fun. So this is a, this is our, our own way of presenting, you know, our personal jam sessions, our personal favorite records and songs uh, to our audience and to our platform. So I'm looking forward to this and hopefully you enjoy it too. Let us know what you think. Uh, now go and watch the first episode of My Karma is Beautiful featuring yes, Black Odyssey. On YouTube.com backslash New Rory and Maul. New Rory and Ma. Wait, so you didn't go see Barbie? That's see Barbie? Up. It's a difference. What? Being a barb and going to She's see Barbie. She's in it. Is she in it? Sure. Uh, <laughs> is Nikki in the movie? I don't know. No. I haven't seen the movie. Oh. See, if Nikki was in it, I would have She did do the red carpet, though, so she's still supported. I think she's on the soundtrack, right? Yeah. Yeah. That too. With Ice Spice. Barbie Girl. But she's in not Barbie in the World. movie. She should be in the movie. Oh, she definitely should. But since she's not, no, I did not. Because Eddie asked me, hey, Maul, did you see Barbie? And I just looked at him. Pardon my ignorance. Is the movie about Barbie or is it a Barbie world? Barbie becomes real. Like, is it... How we went to watch the Phil Knight Jordan story, like telling the story about how the shoe came about. No, is no, this no. movie about no. how the doll came about? No, no. no this, is, this is about a woman named Barbie. This is about, it's Barbie. about literally Barbie. In a Barbie world, it's fantastic. Life is well. What was Barbie's story besides being a doll? Well, so it's, it's you got to understand it's the the director. You Greta, don't want to spoil it for me. No, but Greta Gerwig, <laughs> she's like a very thought provoking. Uh, Excuse me, director. Like her movies are, they're thinking movies. So it's not a, oh, it's, not a it's not a surface level. This whole Barbie time, Barbie, Barbie was a world. director. No, well, Greta actually, Gerwig. she probably is one of them. Oh, yeah. He's talking There's... about Greta Gerwig, the director of Barbie. Got you. Okay. Yeah. So Issa's so in it, right? Issa's in it. Yes, Issa's yeah, in it for a second. Now I might have to go see it since Issa's in it. Who does Issa play? She's a Barbie. Black Barbie. Probably. I mean. But uh, with timeline, sure they didn't bring the black Barbie in until years later. Like, did, is there an age difference between Rory, the two of them? Not, it's not a direct. Tr it's based loosely on the true story. Okay, the so it starts story. with based story. on a true story, a singular true story. <laughs> a Barbie. It's a doll. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I do not know the story of Barbie. At it's all. anyway, Ma. Loosely based. It's really. Uh, it's it's good. I haven't seen it, but I've read <laughs> articles. Wait, what? And I and I know her work. Her work is great. She directed Lady Bird. She's an incredible director. Oh, so the, the the Barbie There's movie been plenty isn't of for children. Great directors that have made bullshit. Yeah, it's an adult film. The Barbie movie isn't for children. Oh, it's for adult adults film. because people who grew up with Barbies are, are adults, adults now, now, for sure. So it's not. Yeah, it's not made for kids. A lot of people said they took their kids, and it was like inappropriate. They're like, "Oh my god, Barbie goes to the gynecologist," and I'm like, "Because it's not a kids movie." Well, she. Movie. I mean, in their defense, she never really had a vagina. Spoiler: She gets her pussy at the end. Why would I would I wanted to see the movie? Is that the spoiler? <laughs> yes, yeah, spoiler. Wait, so in the movie, she has she just has like a fleshy area. Yeah, this cannot have a dick either. No. Oh, that's unfortunate. How do they breed more dolls in that world? That's a great question. There's I think it's maker. like mass production or there's something. A, there's a maker yeah. of, of all of Oh, Will Ferrell plays the uh, owner of like, the. he's like the world guy. I think through his company in the film that they probably produce the dolls. Oh, that's interesting. Well, this is like the number one selling movie in quite some time, right? Yes. Do, do you think it was worth that marketing budget that they put in? Fuck yeah. I'm sure they made it back. What? Yeah. They put a, it grossed, well, it, it's obviously the Barbie Oppenheimer have been the, you know, the big two stories. Barbie had 162 million um, I believe over the weekend, while Oppenheimer had eighty two and a half million. So drastically different budgets, though I would assume. Drastically different <laughs> stories, <laughs> or very similar. The budget for Barbie was both ruin the world. So in the opening See, weekend, Barbie, Barbie made world? all their money. No, I take that back. I'd prefer kids to just play with dolls rather than iPads. So what's sick is Barbie's uh, budget was one forty five mil, and Oppenheimer's budget was one hundred mil. Interesting. Oppenheimer's uh, only a hundred. Yeah. Damn, that's, that's wild. You know who I'm hating right? I'm hating on right. Well, 145 to make the movie. Yeah, probably another hundred in marketing. Market, right? market. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, you know, I guess they weren't planning on recouping the first week. Uh, they're, they're, but most, but most movies, that is how shit. Yeah, goes. They're gonna they, make their bread. Are you going to see Barbie? Anyone? Um, oh. I'll probably wait till it's available, like on the TV, on the streams. Yeah, I don't think I don't know if I can go to the theaters for that. I want to support Issa, and I, I like uh, Margot Robbie, <laughs> but I don't. I yeah, we do. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to uh, Ryan Gosling. He's great. I was gonna say no. Ryan yeah, you're Gosling. a big. You're a big Ryan Gosling. Oh, you're a big guys. I go crazy over Goss. Yeah. 
you. <laughs> you know how much all those Barbies are worth that kids used to like? So many kids, I would go to their house, especially like the black Barbies, they would be, the boxes would be unopened. Wow. And they would be sitting there like, in a lot of like black households. Well, I'm sure you've seen it before. Like the, the collector's Barbies, like the Christmas black ones, mm-hmm. all, they would just be on the shelf, just like untouched. Do you know how much those are probably worth now? Okay, Barbie. I'm I sure opened all my Barbies. Lot. Yeah, what a wild thing to do to a kid. Just tell them to keep Keep yeah. it at the They're box. action figure. You know, in, in 30 box. years, you can get a nice dollar for this? Well, yeah. I'm sure they bought a dollar. I'm saying like a pretty penny. Oh, okay. The same. Okay. <laughs> but um, I saw uh, something about the first, somebody had the, the first iPhone. Oh, yeah. And oh, it yeah. was like, they still had it like stock in the box wrapped. Yes. That shit sold for like, I think, 200 or something yeah. thousand dollars. Or something, yeah, I, I could something, something crazy, I think. I was like, that's somebody that knows like yeah I, I bought this i'm never gonna open this one in like 15 years this is gonna be worth something crazy yeah collector's items got weird i think nfts try to kill that but i don't think that'll ever die if you have the original package of something that's so important mm-hmm. it'll always sell I even see. some of this new shit I, I really think the nft world tried to kill that and failed yeah oh gee like <laughs> taking a picture of the first iphone I have no interest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like Sorry. This, this, here's the first iPhone. That I could look at on my iPhone. Yeah, or that I, I could pull this up on Google right now. <laughs> okay, you, you guys don't want to see Barbie. Would you guys want to go see Oppenheimer? That I would see in theaters and, and, and plan to. Shit was fine. I will watch Barbie, don't get me wrong, but yeah. I'm not running to the theaters. I mean, if, if I went with people that were really excited to see the Barbie movie, maybe I would go. But, you know, I'm not going with the fellas to go check out the Barbie movie. It's kind of weird how that happened though. We went from not seeing any movies like that, right? To now people running to the theaters to do a double feature. This yeah, it's, it's first, like vinyl. This is the first big blockbuster weekend in a long time. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Mission Fuck. Impossible 7 didn't do nothing? <laughs> well, I mean, not, no, it <laughs> yeah. didn't. Wait, not Top like Gun that. did pretty well though, right? The second one? I, 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 Which I, I walked back a lot of my hate. I that was, I meant, that was the biggest. Two movies. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Like a double feature. Cause, double feature, yeah. Because Top Gun 2 is still like the, the highest grossing movie ever, right? Is it really? No. I think so. No. Next to no. Vincent Chase's uh, Aquaman. Beating it. Wait, isn't Avatar still the highest grossing movie? <laughs> I think Top Gun 2 might be the biggest, man. No way. Either that, Can anything be or that Black way? Because people don't really go to the Number Avatar. one is Avatar. Yeah, Avatar, I figured. Because people went to the movies in 2000. And then Avengers. Damn, you got both of the Avatars on top. Avengers and I'm talking about second. The, I'm talking about of, of the year, though. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, that's, that's lifetime gross that we're looking at. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's look up highest, you mean like biggest highest grossing film first week. Yeah, but it's still crazy that even Lifetime. I mean, I'm sure Black Panther oh, is uh, is still up there. That definitely broke records. Avatar again. Avatar. Oh yeah, let me look at that. Top Gun. Top I mean, Gun. Avatar that's so 20, far that's ahead. Top Gun was number two. Though. Yeah. Well, that's the year it came that's out. That's when they came out. So it was number two. Jurassic World is gonna get smoked. By I'm I'm so mad I could never. <laughs> if get a into billion is getting movies. smoked, I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. What, what am I missing when it comes to Avatar and, and those type of movies? Uh, I just, I it's, really it's try. The cinematography, like that's what it really. I'm is. with you. I'm not on, like I'm not trying to be too cool. Like I really want to enjoy them. I just can't get into them. Yeah, Rory doesn't like anything like you like fantasy world. Fantasy. No, not so that's why he I doesn't want to watch Game of Thrones with me. Yeah, like, so I that's begged. Why. Like he doesn't want to watch anything. I think it might have been Harry Potter ruining it because it was like he never fucked Hermione and I was off. Are you like I never even made ass? it to the second movie? <laughs> yo, you know why he was. You know why he was mad at the movie. There were ten in the first one. Yeah. You can have an invisible cloak, but can't beat the girl that clearly likes you. Yeah, but they were kids. No, I'm not saying use the invisible cloak to fuck her. Yeah, it was, you didn't need it. That's a sick thought. Like, Wait, that's, that's not what thought. I'm saying. I swear. No, no, no. Right, like, just I'm just saying on. you have so many powers. Like, But they were kids. Yeah, they were You kids. never fucked when you were a kid? No, they were literally. No, no, not they, were literally they were at sleepaway camp. What does that mean? Mad fucking has happened at, that, at sleepaway camp. Nah, man. Not as kids, no. <laughs> you can lift things up with your mind. You don't think they could sneak to the girl dorm? Wand. Yeah, but they were kids. It all sound like, real rapey, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why are y'all going to rape you? That's like, Julian. Bro, use your powers. Use the invisible clothes. <laughs> or sneak in there. Yeah, like, sneak in there. And also, oh, wait, I have, did Hermione y'all ever go to summer liked, camp? Nah, bro, because you're not going to get this off. Hermione never liked Harry. She liked Ron. I never made it to the second movie. Yeah, to your credit, she And did maybe like, it's self-hate. She, she preferred the ginger. Oh, oh see? Uh, there you go. See you there. Or maybe I, I should have... Maybe yeah, I should have stuck around. I would have felt seen. Yeah, you wouldn't need to go. go. You, repre- you would have been represented. There's but y'all are weird. All right. You guys never went to a sleepaway camp or anything in your life? No. Yes. And I didn't think about fucking anybody. I was a kid. <laughs> oh, well, get your hormones up, I was buddy. fucking 11 years old. Yeah, <laughs> loser. I was 11 at sleepaway camp. But it was hard to sneak to like the girl side of the camp. And I'm saying if you have an invisible cloak, you could get past... Yeah, but I was camp counselor at eleven. Not to fuck the girl in the invisible cloak, weirdos. Yeah, but the 
to Maul's point, none of us were having that thought. We At 11? 11. I wasn't thinking about anything. I was like eating candy. They're uh, wizards. Which, all right, maybe I was just cooler than y'all. <laughs> or hornier. <laughs> yeah, probably both. <laughs> Welcome yeah, horny to a new cool. episode of the new Rory and Maul podcast. I am Maul. I'm Rory. And we're back <laughs> with a new episode. Um, so yeah, none of us saw Oppenheimer yet. I did. You saw it? That shit was lit. 70 millimeter. That yeah. shit was lit. It's actually very That shit was funny. fire, yo. I yeah. loved it. It was great. Yeah. I yeah. would love to live it's in the, the nuclear town in New Mexico. I wonder how all those kids like ended up. Probably kind of fucked up. I would think so. Yeah. They got secluded and shit. Because what year was that? Third, 40, 40s? 40 something. Yeah. So, you know, you'd think at least some of those kids are still around. Yeah, we really No did. one's interviewed the kids that lived in that town? Uh, 45. 45. We did not have to do that to Japan, y'all. That was crazy. Well, this was, this was interesting because it's like one of the first major films where there is no... Uh, everyone's bad. There's no good, yeah, there's positive no good character. Bad. You hate everyone in mm. this is a bad person. And Oppenheimer? Yeah. yeah. So America, like, yeah, yeah, but I'm saying like, <laughs> there's no like, here. there's no insider that's like, we shouldn't do. It. Everyone's like, push that shit, yeah. light them up, mm. and then then afterwards they're like, ah, oh, shit, whoops. I mean, but with no with no that's context, yeah. you always have to put yourself in the time, no? Yeah, if, all right. of course. If Pearl Harbor gets attacked today, and it's it's just the fucking base in Hawaii, yeah, it's they're all just the troops. Screamed on. I think all of us would be like, all right, we'll go attack. The troops don't yeah. go kill a bunch of innocent civilians. That's not what they did here. In the times, though, like in that spark, star spangled banner, fuck everyone, we're America, fuck yeah. Yeah. All of us here would have been like, yes, let's go bomb the shit out of everybody. Kind of, yeah. Even after 9 11, we kind of felt like, let's go bomb everybody with the I little mean, bit we, of knowledge we had we at the did. time. We did. Mind we you, did. I was 11 and horny trying to sneak into other <laughs> camps. <laughs> but. <laughs> I didn't have the tools. I was on the side of go bomb whoever the fuck. Yeah. That's why we went to Iraq. They had nothing to do with it. We were like, nope. fuck it. Who Take cares? Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah, not everyone. Well, of course they're evil, but in the forties, you wouldn't have been the cool liberal, like, oh, we should think about Japan and the commies, the, the kids. And the You're not thinking that way. Be poisoned the you think and fuck them kids. It's world war two. They attacked us. Let's kill everybody. You think you would have been a commie? No. A commie. I love that. <laughs> I love capitalism. <laughs> I love my commie. <laughs> <laughs> Japan should make a version from their end for the Pearl Harbor. It's going to be very bright. They did. Uh, wasn't it like Wolverine? Some historic. Sorry, Excuse what? me? It was, Excuse the last, me? it was the last samurai it was starring uh, Tom Cruise. <laughs> no, it was Wolverine. Then Wolverine. Isn't what, that? with Hugh Jackman? Who, yeah, what do you mean Wolverine? They, wasn't part of his story. He was in um when they got no, bombed. Was, was, they, prof, was Professor X FDR in the chair? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> it's part of the Wolverine story. No, right? he was in, he was saying in from Japan their perspective, not through like a, a, a action hero, like oh, yeah. alternative okay. universe. I'm saying like for real life. Yeah. I mean, I, I got to go see this movie, though. I heard great things about that's it. Good. Well, America in this generation is really good with our propaganda movies. Like, we hide the propaganda in it. 100%. Like, we throw Tom Hanks being a teacher, and we're just trying to save Matt Damon. Meanwhile, we're Gets doing a lot of time. fucked up shit to that town. It gets me every time. Oh, <laughs> uh, dude, Top Gun is fucking the purest propaganda. Like, that was... Who is really? They they said they wouldn't say who he's fighting in the new Top Gun. You know yeah. exactly who the fuck he's fighting. They just wouldn't say it. Who's he fighting? China. Oh, really? Big China. They had all the technology, all like the fake oh, robotic pilots and shit. It was China. It. They just couldn't like slap a flag on it and be like, "They're our enemies." Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're 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 nice with the propaganda now. We're not like Germany that's just flat out straight propaganda yeah. where it's so easy to identify. <laughs> what was that, Demaris? Yeah, what was that? Hold on, the camera was your arm. Were, you, were you doing the ball and dance or were you doing something else? <laughs> were you doing the ball and <laughs> dance? No, no, no. Different arm. type of Jim Jones? <laughs> it's uh, wild how the wow. wrist can like change the entire... You go from this entire, to a 45 degree, well, it, it changes the entire thing. <laughs> what I learned... It could, either be, different it, message. Could, it could either be Jim Jones balling <laughs> <laughs> or it could be something totally yeah. different where it's like, whoa! Are you just going for a high five? What is that guy doing? <laughs> 45 degrees. It means I made the three. And yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. The, three. Yeah. the whole the follow through. <laughs> you either you either got a question or like you got to keep it. Like, yo, it's, this can change everything. This yeah. to this. Yeah. The, the angle on this changes yeah. the entire yeah. thing. Yo, I watched uh, some TikTok video that made it to Instagram <laughs> of some guy who we don't know saying with confidence that we used to do the Pledge of Allegiance like this before we did this. And then there was just nothing but comments with so much confidence about how. America is. And I'm like, we don't know this guy. 
Mm-hmm. Can, can we confirm that we did this at the, at the flag? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Why is this guy on TikTok now making this a law? Because he decided to say with confidence, that's what we used to do. Yeah. You got the views. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Period. That's and where did he learn that? It looks like it used to be called the Bellamy salute. So, oh, well, Wikipedia says it. So bet. All well, right. my, my bet. It looks yeah. like in the 40s, it was the, it was also known as the flag salute. But I mean, also even in church, like we still do this. Kind of. Yeah. On our hearts. Right. No, like when you know, it's like sometimes when, when, yeah, someone needs to be prayed oh. over, we just oh, all, yes, like, we all salute. Get the spirit out. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. you got to do that with the spirit fingers, though. It has to happen. Yeah, there has to be movement. Mm-hmm. No one yeah. is just straight like this. Yeah, that, straight like that. Yeah. No, no, you can't you have to that. keep the figure. Has to be. That's banned. So <laughs> like most things, they just hijack things that already existed. Yeah. Like, because yeah. even the swastika was like a Buddhist symbol yeah. long before. Like, they, they just took things and kind of ruined them. Gave Whoever them. does it worse, then we just give it to them and leave it alone. Yeah, yeah once you less. put like a, a foul stench on it, it's like, okay. What was the last symbol that got Ooh. ruined? <laughs> the American flag. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Because if you think about it, and we're talking about the 40s, the flag was everywhere and it was cool. Now when you see a flag, you get a little nervous. It's true. It's terrified. It's attached. It has a racist notion to it to some degree. Trump and the proud. Unless it's Joel Santana. Can you think of any time you'd see someone draped in the flag? Willie Nelson and Joel Santana are the only two. That's actually hilarious. But I feel That like can really flag it out and you're like, eh, we should be okay. That became a thing with like Trump, though, I feel like, because back in the day, we used to be dripped out on 4th of July. Flags everywhere. Well, post 9-11, America was very patriotic. Yeah. Patriotic. yeah. Rawr, rawr, rawr. Roll time. I would say around Obama time is when the flag got a little weird. Obama time. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. It's when they start shooting black kids oh, for no reason. What are you trying to say? That it was Obama, like everything else in the world, it was Obama's fault. Okay. Thanks, Obama. No? No. Is it not? I don't think okay. it was Obama's fault. The flag, I don't know. The, the American flag, just the last... Five years, the flag got a real nasty. Proud Boys did their part. Yeah. It got like a real nasty tone the last five years. You didn't feel that around the the Obama, uh, Mitt Romney election that the flag started to take a turn? Trump definitely like that election put the clamps on it that the flag have have a racist tone to it. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But I think during the, the Romney Obama shit, you started to feel like, all right, why you giving a little too much American pride right now? Mm-hmm. What you trying to say? And then once they tried to ban the, the the Southern shit, then it was like, well, let's just you know, stars and stripes it out. <laughs> Am I, think, I wrong? <laughs> I think India Love may have wore a, a star a flag bikini. I think she kind of brought it some, was her. Okay, oh my she kind of brought some type of type of you know. Was this when Game was fingering her in the park or post that? Excuse me. No, mm. this was this was after. That. He was the flagpole. Okay, like and he wears the flag, just not, you know. He and he be flagging <laughs> the American flag. See, it's red. false flag. It's red and white. <sighs> I'm putting yeah. a white flag right now. It is what it is. Do you think Ruby Rose is reaching like India Love levels of like the bad bitch of bad bitches? I think she surpassed India Love. No. In popularity, I think so too. No. Well, give, us, give boys, us why. <laughs> these young boys, Ruby Rose is their India Love for sure. Ruby Rose is amazing. India Love is their India Love still. No, they're no, no, not true at all. Not. Are you crazy? These no. young boys. I'm talking about these young boys, Ma. When I say young boys, I mean like the 16, 7, 16 through like 23, 25 year old boys. People my age, 33. Yeah. Yeah, my, my age too. Yeah, my age too. Sorry. Sorry. She's been surpassed. <laughs> I she passed the torch though. Like I she's think still, you're a she's still an OG in the game. I'm biased. biased. Why is he biased? Because he loved India Love. Because well, she was peak in his era. He's India. No, love. she wasn't peak in my era. I just think India Love is. She has. I think to me, she's still more popular than Ruby Rose. She has more style. I think she's. You know, Stop, she's I mean, still, Ruby Rose just wears a thong, so I can't. I can't help you in the uh, the, 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 the style. That's, what, I mean. that's what I'm saying. Like I'm just talking about just just style and influence. I think. India Love still has more. What do you think either of them have influenced in the world? <laughs> Bad bitches. Oh, they've inf- influenced a lot of uh, a lot of females, for sure. Absolutely. To do what exactly? Um, to be just pretty lit girls that just you know make all the boys drool and you know. Treat- Every time I see Ruby Period. Rose, I put whatever I'm eating down. <clears throat> Oh, Same, man. huh? <laughs> like whatever I'm eating at the time, when wow. I see her, I put it down. Uh, maybe we should have taken that nuke thing a little further. You are ridiculous. <laughs> Why? <laughs> so y'all- they've influenced girls just to be pretty lit. That's all girls are now. <laughs> just- Wait, whoa, whoa, all right. Now you're taking this too far. 
I mean, I mean, not a particular type of girl. I mean, okay, yeah, like they want to be pretty. You know, all the, all the boys want them. Mm. Yeah, you know, they just having fun, enjoying life. How right. long do you think this career path uh, lasts? A lot, a while. I mean, well, Marilyn Monroe started it, right? Mm. And then had a very tragic. That's death. the one from your era. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> Yeah, she started it, right? It may have been somebody before Marilyn, but I'm she survived the nuclear era, to be quite honest. Yeah. She did. She, she was the uh she was the 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 first sex symbol. Sex symbol that we can think of, yeah. I think. Documented. Documented. Allegedly. Yeah. Well, so at, at what point yes. do the women stop being lit and pretty and then have to get a job? She has if, a job. Uh, if the trapping doesn't work. What's Ruby Rose's job? She's an artist? She's an artist. Let's take Ruby Rose out of this because I'm sure Ruby Rose has more money than most of us. She has multiple jobs, actually. But but the women that she's influencing to be pretty and lit. Mm -hmm. Does she have a job in her bio? She's she, a rose. Does she have to? No. But she wears many hats. The majority of those photos are wearing shit that was given to her for her to be paid to Sponsor. wear. Yeah. All right. Well, speaking of nuclear shit, Ruby Rose <laughs> and saluting the flag. Aliens exist as of this morning. Love it. As of this morning. Yes. There was a, a UFO whistleblower, David Grush, uh, confirmed under oath that the U.S. government has non-human bodies, a.k.a. aliens, mm -hmm. not illegal ones, mm -hmm. and UFOs in their possession. Something we've all known, but this shit is now in, in the White House and under oath. Why are people still surprised by this? It's not surprised. It's that so much evidence is out that they're forced to have to bring it into court. Mm-hmm. Because before, you know, they could have a bunch of evidence and even if it made sense, it'd be like, you're crazy. Yeah. Now it's in court. It's under oath. It does change things a bit. But to me, they're getting ahead of something. Something is about to happen and they need to get ahead of it. Not just the shit that happened in Vegas with the, that shit in the backyard. Not with all these Navy pilots proving that things are just moving across the sky in ways we can't explain. They're getting ahead of something. Mm -hmm. And I've always, I've asked this question on, on here before, speaking of Top Gun. Why are we trying to be so fast? We're not trying to battle another country for how for going Mach 17. How does that work in, in war? Um, that's actually a great question. <laughs> like, come on. This is because we're fighting these guys. We're terrified of what is happening. We see something take a sharp left that we could never take in our lives at Mach 10. And we're terrified. I don't think I think is. most of our why. And this is my conspiracy shit. When you look at the defense budget outside of the corrupt America shit, we all wonder why. America has such a, a crazy defense budget compared to the 10 countries under us that are all allies. Like, what are we really gearing up for? I think there's corruption and money laundering within that, but I also think we're scared of the aliens. So, I think we're terrified. So I think that we probably owe Trump some flowers right now. Oh, oh God. Oh, yeah. well, what did Trump force? do here? I mean, yeah, he created the Space Force and people were laughing at him. Like, why is he creating a budget for Space Force? You think Trump started the Space Force? I'm not saying he started it, but he was, he was allotting money. He was opening a budget for that to focus on that and people were saying he's crazy. What um what year did NASA start? Julian, do you mind pulling that up? <laughs> How old was Trump when uh, NASA started? 1958. Yeah, 1958. <laughs> what year was Trump born? Oh, actually in three days it'll be the anniversary of NASA's creation. We've been on this type of shit. Yeah, we, but I'm just saying that Trump, people, people... I'm an American. created the Space Force so that, that like at that point he signed a bill which was $730 billion dollars um, that was particularly spent towards that division. Exactly. For aliens, though? That's what he was specifying in that? It was department? mostly just about astronauts returning to the moon. It wasn't necessarily in regards to fighting extraterrestrial life. And going to Mars. And coming back from Mars. Yeah, studying space. Yeah, but we've been doing that. It's conducting military operations in outer space. I think NASA has more exploration. Conducting military operations in outer space. Trump just so, wanted and to what do you think that, NASA's been doing? That's Trump, more exploration. He wants to build a discovery. wall on Mars. In that too, yeah. He wants to build, yeah. Trump is trying to build an orbit around. <laughs> an orbit is hilarious. Yeah. And y'all laughed at him. Kind of, yeah. You're really trying to give credit to Trump. <laughs> I'm for just this. saying. <laughs> Look, he, create, he put money in the Space Force to conduct Military combat in outer space. So we should like we should give no credit to John F. Kennedy. It should all go. Nah. To, it should all go. I see to you Donald trying to Trump. give your Irish brother some credit, but nah, <laughs> not him. It goes to Don here. We got to give Don the flowers for sure. Well, first of all, my president, John Patrick uh, Fitzpatrick, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. Kennedy, did that to uh, distract us from communism and the Russians. Right. Mm -hmm. At least it was for a good cause. Mm -hmm. And then Trump really was laundering money. <laughs> <laughs> He 
put his taxes through the space for. I don't know why they keep looking into space for UFOs and aliens. Aliens are in the ocean, clearly. Well, when they crash. I think it's a form of it. Yeah. And what, what, what is an alien? Well, whatever they... Life that we can't... We don't know what to identify. Life that we think was not here prior to? Right. Okay. But we don't even know that with the ocean. Like, the amount of species that we find, and it's like, oh, we just didn't know about that. That species could have just got here in the ocean. Mm-hmm. Could have just face-planted <laughs> and went to the bottom. Yeah. And I, we just I, never saw it. I truly believe that that's where a lot of these UFOs come from. I think they come from the ocean. What do they say? Like some odd, what, 90 some odd percent of the ocean is un- unexplored, something like that? 90, 90, 90%? Yeah. It's not, it hasn't shit. been discovered. It's pretty large. Scary. Well, where does this uh, leave us if the UFOs are now going to uh, expose themselves to us common folk? You think like for real? Not, I think not a lot like of these. In backyards in Vegas. No, like, but you think they'll do that soon for real? Uh, I don't see this as a distraction because there's so much Can't even have evidence that's happening that I do think they're getting ahead of it. Like something is about to happen. There's no way that we're privileged to this information or even this hearing with the quote unquote whistleblower without an agenda. Mm-hmm. They're not doing this because it's the right thing to do. They're, and I don't think that's a conspiracy. They're just covering their ass. I think that is. Yeah. All, I think it all comes down to there are way too many cameras on Earth now. Yes. Like mm-hmm. everybody has a camera and, you know, if you see something, you can record it right away. So I think this is the government's way of saying, yes, we've seen a multiple, you know, home footage and, and personal footage, personal uh, video being sent around the Internet. So I just think this is the government's way of saying, yes, it is real. Uh, UFOs do exist. Like, yeah, duh, we're not crazy. Like some people are actually seeing it. That thing in Vegas was was wild. But that's why the thing in Vegas was also telling, too, though, because. You know, any movie that we have with aliens and UFOs is always them trying to fight us, kill us, bring harm to us. Mm -hmm. Those things that landed in that backyard were like scared of the family. Like they didn't want to be seen. They were kind of like they weren't trying to attack that family or do anything. It was kind of like they were just standing behind whatever that uh, what was it? A tractor, tractor, whatever they had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like they didn't even want to be, you know, what I mean, they were kind of like they were scared. So it's like, you know, you, you always see movies where they just kill humans and they they push a button and melt, evaporate a human, you know, in two seconds and all this other corny shit. But it's like, the the which I think is some of the, the best footage we've seen with that family in Vegas. Um, they weren't attacked. They didn't seem like they were in any danger. They didn't seem like they were aggressive or anything like that. So, you know, I think I just think that this is all... The beginning of us being, you know, shown that everything we were taught about other life forms and from other planets and things like that is just not true. I think uh, I think a, a peace treaty was broken behind the scenes. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm rolling. Do you guys think? I, I think people well above our government <laughs> that really communicate. Somebody didn't get paid. That why it didn't go through? Yeah. I feel like we started to get on our human arrogance shit. And something just didn't go well. Some type of treaty we've had with aliens for quite some time was broken. I think we got on our human shit. We started moving a little faster. We started getting jets that were a little crazier. And we started feeling ourselves. And so we started talking to the aliens with a little sauce in our voice. Mm, that's what you think. I think, think we got, I think we got a little too human and egotistical goes? and thought we could hang with them. Yo, what if the aliens are weak as fuck? What if they're friendly as fuck? That's yeah, what, what if they're we've had What if they gave us every technology? I'm not going to expect them to be friendly. Why? Why not? Why? Most cases when we've, co- we've encountered something strange or out of the world it hasn't been good. Think about Columbus here. That's white people, bro. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, what what I'm that's what I'm scared of. Have you seen the, the Navy pilot footage of how that thing was moving around? And why all the alien sightings for real are over just nuclear plants and things of that nature? They were just to check shit out. You think they're scared of us? No. Anything that can move like that is scared of us because we can go in a straight line really fast. Maybe this is my patriotic side saying that we should just not be afraid of aliens. Uh, I mean, but I'm the I'm the weird guy that thinks most of our technology spike that we had came from them to begin with. And I think we've had an agreement with people. I'm talking about the people that own the color blue. I'm not talking about <laughs> the, who's running for president. I'm not talking about George Soros. I'm not talking about Bill Gates. I'm talking about the faceless people that we will never see. I oh, think they got too big for their britches. And now we have to start exposing some of this alien shit because the aliens are fed up with us. It's time. We're, and we're going to be seen. We're, like, we're going to be as aliens are now be like, all right, bro, we we stayed in the background for a while. 
amongst our, our little signed agreement. And now we, we became humans as we all are. Damn, it's human nature to be arrogant. Pods. I think I figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm See, an alien. Trump. I yeah. Think, I think Bro's I think, been on it the whole time. I think aliens taught us about like potting weed and shit and cannabis. <laughs> and then once we made it legal, because all of this shit started happening once we made it legal. Wow. Right? Think about it. Deep. Wow. Think about it. Soon as soon as soon as cannabis became legal, we started seeing more aliens all of a sudden. You don't think it was when we discovered what the atom bomb is and what those two sources can do with uh, each other. Man, it's the weed, man. Weed, it's a weed thing. Yeah, it's the plant. Fuck nuclear fission. It's the plant. Soon as we legalized it, now all of a sudden we start seeing more aliens and UFOs. Is it just because people are high and they're like, what was that? No, I think they're coming back to get their plants. <laughs> Stop. That's, can you imagine? Mall. What? Yeah. <laughs> I think are you so. high right now? No. <laughs> do you ever get nervous? No. You're definitely Tell single. You. <laughs> definitely single. But I'm just saying like, yeah. Think about it. Well, you don't think that the aliens could just get, get their plants? No. Yeah, they can get their plants. But that's what I'm saying. I think they're coming back to like take all of their plants. <laughs> but something that, that could move that fast in different diagonal directions like couldn't put like seeds in soil? Nah, Maybe of course grow. they could put seeds in soil. But I think that they, they, they taught us about how to grow it. They taught us its, 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 its uses, its purpose. So we its are ours. We are the pilgrims. They were the Native Americans and teaching us how to harvest. Yeah, you know and how thanks, weed, Thanksgiving is coming. You know how weed yeah, was exactly. like found. There you fall. go. Do you huh? know how weed was discovered? Do I know how weed was discovered? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, how was weed discovered? I have Somebody no wanted to get high one day and they saw bushes. Well, actually, it was Moses, the burning bush. Remember the burning bush? The bush. You remember the burning Horse. bush? Yeah. yeah, George. That was weed. And he said the bush was talking to him. My Remember mother that? taught yeah. Sunday school for years. She never brought that up when we were talking about mother. Yeah, that's what it was. Well, it's, it's, yeah, it's a similar it, outside of the Bible. But yeah, in real life, there was a group of yeah Native Americans and they were doing brush fires to clear space to grow stuff. And they would burn what's in their path and they would burn weed without obviously knowing. And they would get this sensation from it. They thought it was attributed to the spirits, et cetera. Turns out they were just getting really high. That's lit. And then they were Thank like, you, what aliens. if we harvested this and then smoked it? The aliens. How does this election go if the aliens come? Oh, shit. <sighs> you think How does any of our, our world, worldly disagreements go you think aliens when the aliens are right? I, I, I'm curious to see how all of us are even going to come together when the aliens show up. We're not. Come together when the aliens show up. We're not. We're probably going to separate even more. Do they have a home? Yeah, space, man. No, but like, we're, like we have a planet, but we have rockets that go places, whatever the case may be. Yeah. But Earth is home. Yeah, what's their home? Do they have a planet, or are they just like out there, free for falling from space? Free fall. I think they have. I think this is their home, Earth. Mm. Mm -hmm. You think they also share Earth with us? Mm -hmm. It was probably theirs first. Okay, I'm not. This mad is at just that. a social experiment. <laughs> that is, when we talk about we're in a simulation, I do also think that maybe we're just in the alien simulation. This I is mean, one big Truman Show. The reality TV we watch, where their reality TV? Well, I believe it. I mean, if, if we if we look at historical patterns, and I'm saying we just broke our contract with the executive producer, and the show is coming to a fucking end. Damn, they are, we on strike? Yes, Double. like we Fuck. we mouthed off to Mona Scott a little too fucking much, mm -hmm. and we're gonna be taken off world and hip hop. Like it's it's fucking over, is what I'm saying. World and hip hop. It's fucking hip -hop. over. Yeah, because it's only two things: it's the world yeah, and yeah, hip hop. Yeah, yeah. we are all rich dollars right yeah. now. Oh, and it's the 50th anniversary of hip hop. Damn. Maybe the aliens are coming to celebrate. They want to uh, see Melly Mel. African men bought the starship. They go, you know, you, you always go. talked about the that. It's true. Listen, yeah. man, I could tie all of this shit in. How much time we got? I mean, they think this is planet And why Supreme Wisdom? Oh, fuck. I'm just saying. I could tie all this shit in, man. I think they're coming back to celebrate. I think it's a party. Party people. Yeah. <laughs> the original Asiatic black man. Take me to your leader. Oh. For, for Elsa and Alien? No, that was the PC Boys. They were white. Oh. oh. My bad. Whoops. I loved Intergalactic. You did? Is that, <laughs> is that really white of me? <laughs> yes. But I love yeah. Beastie Boys. Intergalactic. Yeah, Intergalactic. Planet. That record was so fire. <laughs> I used to wait. Because I that was on MTV when I was alive. When you was you alive? Are, alive right are you now. dead? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. No, but like when I was really... I'm trying... I, I have vague memories of waiting for that video on. <laughs> Rory's like, I died many moons ago. Yeah. This is just a shell of who I used to be. 
No, because this was like, la- like yeah, latter Beastie Boys, not like 80s Beastie Boys. Yeah, early 90s. Yeah, I remember waiting for this video. Dang, look at that car. It's a great video. This is what is going to happen to us. You would rock that fit? I mean, if it would keep me We should recreate me. this video. Yeah. <laughs> Inner pilactic. So I was going to say, like all civilizations, everything comes to an end. Right. If you had to put a timeline on us, like America, the, the current people that exist, how, like, when do you think it would end? Like the Romans fell, all these cities get buried, shit goes under, life goes on, earth is just like a cycle. How, what do you think the cap is on our reign as the current modern man? Oh, I mean, I think, I think the gaslight has been on. I think we're running on fumes on the highway, but we're coasting right now. Okay. That it's, was, it's just, that I'm not bad. sure how long the coast can go. I don't think we're in range of a gas station. I think we're just in our last leg and we're going to see how much the momentum can carry us. How much time? Would uh, the momentum could be two more generations. Yeah. Maybe. But I, I think we're, we're definitely, the tank is on E. Like the a- light is on, no gas station in sight. Damn. But we're there. It, it could be two generations. It could be three. But we're there. Three generations in the scope of things is this much. It's Ancient not much Egypt lasted 3,000 years. It's a long time. That is a long time. America, I mean, our country's only what? Yeah, I've only just got to 50 years, y'all. Our country's like what? Uh, 200. It's not. America's oh, young. It's 2023. No what are you talking about? No. It's based off America. <laughs> July 4th, That's zero is when it was founded. July 4th, <laughs> zero? Zero of the year. America's only 245. Yeah. If, yeah, I, was gonna, I mean, I was going to guess maybe 200 years. You're close. Um, so wait, 2023 is not based off America being founded. Mm-mm. No, it's when Trump was born. Jesus. Yeah. So we got time. Do we? If Egypt lasted 3,000 years, I think we're close. And I mean, listen. Pyramids are still there. more than 15 the times the age of Egypt. our current state. Y'all sound like y'all scared. I'm a bit, uh, petrified. A I mean, we'll be long crazy. gone. If we're pacing in 3,000 years, we're straight. I just dodged a train or a crane falling on me. <laughs> I was going to say, hey, yo. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, <laughs> Young conductor. <laughs> <laughs> I just dodged the train. <laughs> I walked in the room and I felt something come over me. Maybe I almost joined. <laughs> <laughs> Is that worse than Eddins? No. I just dodged the train. <laughs> what if I actually dodged a real train and not a sexual you know? innuendo that you guys are bringing up? <laughs> like, you know, think about somebody dodging a train, like a, a sexual train. Like, how do you, you do roll, that? roll in the bed? You leave the room. <laughs> you, yeah. barrel, you barrel roll? Yeah. You barrel roll? You leave That's the barrel roll out of the bed. <laughs> you pull your pants up and you get the fuck out yeah. of there. You got a barrel roll. <laughs> oh man, that's hilarious, man! Imagine a nigga barrel rolling on <laughs> with his pants still at his ankles. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Holy shit, that was funny, oh man. God. That's disgusting. oh man. Well, anyway. Either way, man. Let's uh. Hopefully, we can see some aliens soon, man. Fuck it, man. I'm I'm tired of not being seeing no aliens, man. I want to see some fucking. You're tired of not seeing. Yeah, seen I'm them. mad. I never seen it. Like why I never seen one. Everybody else seen one. Because you've just been in the Bronx. That's they're where they definitely. should be at. It's, it's, they should be there. They're on the ground in the Bronx. Yeah, that's where they should be at. I've never seen no sky. fucking aliens, man. Oh, man. Well, anyways, I did dodge a crane. You did? Yeah, there was this a morning. There was a crane on fire. What was that about? <laughs> <laughs> like, how did that happen? How does <laughs> a crane just catch fire like that? Uh, I, I don't know because it just happened this morning, but I was half asleep, awake. Oh, the crane actually fell. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, shit. It Nobody was hurt. A, no one asked me if I was going. okay when I came in the office today. I said, wow. Well, I saw you, so I knew you were fine. Yeah, I knew you were fine. Well, no one asked about my wait, mental that, health. Wait, but wait, that street wasn't closed. No, Ma, it's the fucking building I was in. So nobody was hurt? I mean, mentally, I feel a bit unstable, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure someone was yeah, hurt there was, when there that was some crane injuries. fell. Yeah, I think they said six people were injured. Uh, thankfully, no fatalities. But this, where it hits mall, that's a residential. That's what building. I'm saying. Yeah. Like, so there's that's an expensive unit. I'd be tight. You know, I was hoping it was Rory so he could like you know get like a free like some money. No, you know my child was. Next oh to me. yeah, I mean it was yeah, just the window. Like, you wouldn't put her in the window. So at like seven thirty in the morning, I forgot exactly what time it was. I'm half awake, 
Kia gets up to change Amara. Like, look, that's, the, people are driving on that street. Maul, I was sleeping on that street. I don't know. I don't know how to get this through your head. I was I was right next to that I crane. Maul's like, imagine being there. He was I right was there. there. <laughs> no, I no, no, no. I wasn't kind of. I was there. No, Maul, I Maul's thing was, why didn't they like close that street? Off? Yeah, why didn't they, why didn't you shut that street? Because it was burning. It happened for a while. immediately. Yeah, it happened mad suddenly. Oh, okay. I thought it was going for a while, and then the crane just fell. You know, like my baby, like Amara, right? Can you yeah. imagine being Yeah, right Amara there. was right there with me. Yo, that's some scary Yo, you just don't shit. give a fuck about it. I'm me. very no, that's, happy that's that like, Amara are, are okay. Yeah, that's you said the sound woke you up, right, Roy? No, I was I was half awake and Kia was changing Amara's diaper and we heard what sounded like the biggest explosion fucking ever. Damn. And she immediately opened the blinds and we were staring at a fucking crane on fire. fire. Well, yeah, because you sent that to the chat this morning and I just saw the, the crane on fire, but I didn't know that that the crane. We were fire. we were woken up by this crane okay. hitting that building Got from you. across the street. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah, I'm it was fucking sure wild. People, people downtown was that that looks like a little 911 to show all over again. And I'm starting to feel like maybe I'm part of the problem because the last crane that fell in downtown Manhattan, I was right next to. Mm. I was working on Hudson and crane. Canal and I was walking up Hudson from the path train when the last crane in downtown Manhattan fell and I watched and heard the entire fucking thing. Sweet. So I think I'm the problem. You're the I just need to killer. stay away from Solange, what? cranes, anything Construction wise, I think I may have bad luck. Are you an X Men? Like, do you just have the like power final to destination. bring down cranes yeah. when you find out? I don't want them to. That's not really a power. That's a fear. Ooh. I don't. Mm. <laughs> I don't. Maybe I'm magnetic. Well, hopefully everybody's okay. <laughs> um, you said it was six. Six people were hurt. Uh, it looks like yeah, a few injuries. Well, hopefully, I'm from the street. Cause that yeah, that's some. Fell. That's some. That's that could have been bad. Yeah, yeah. Because that's like a residential. Like people are living there, walking there, driving there. Like a Just big ass it. crane yeah. falling from that high. And I'm glass. gonna continue to make this about me. Oh, you could do it. Where that crane fell is where I walk every single morning with Amar. That's crazy. Yeah, that's some wild shit. Bagel spot is right there on tenth. I walk exactly where that crane fell every single morning. Thank God I don't do it at seven o'clock in the morning. Did you see the aftermath at all? Of course, out the fucking window. I was. No, I mean, like, staring at it the entire time. No. Oh. Yeah, damn. Imagine I watched the there. entire thing. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's that's that's. I watched people come out on fucking scary. stretchers. Everything. Wow, yeah, that's scary. I watched the hotel get fucking evacuated. Like them, oh, the hotel. Them put up the the tape. Like the whole shit. Right. Well, we're happy. You're and then we were sitting there like, should we fucking leave? Because what if that other side falls? <laughs> right. Yeah, that's scary. Yeah, she was wild. I wonder what happened. Well, hopefully everybody's okay. It's no real life threatening injuries. Um. And hopefully that crane is stable now because that's scary, man. Anytime you, because anytime you see construction with, you know, they're building these high rise buildings in Manhattan, you look up, you never really think about, yo, what if that falls? That's taken out. Like the way that fell could have been 10 times worse than what yeah. it was. Yeah. And shout out to the firefighters. It, it was kind of funny though, <laughs> trying to like watch them like try to reach it. It took, they used a couple different hoses. I'll say that. Hmm. It was like watching someone try to like piss off the balcony and like the stream just oh, didn't get the make arc. It. <laughs> get the arc going? Okay, yes. I see what you mean. Get the velocity up. Yeah. Because they went to the building that it actually hit and went on one of like the big terraces to try to put out the crane from that angle. Mm -hmm. And it was just multiple hoses that didn't didn't reach. You're taking a blue chew. I mean, I was I was cheering them on, but you know, I'm a big FDNY guy. Yeah. So Irish, but yeah. USA. Yeah, it yeah. took a little while. <laughs> Well, hopefully everybody is uh, okay and none of those injuries are life-threatening. Um, on to uh, more important news. Ice Spice tells British Vogue <laughs> that she keeps a spare a spare pair of drawers in her bag at all times. Damaris, react. Yeah, Damaris. Uh, girls do that. That's what girls do. That's yes, none. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Well, she said, she said, if you're a baddie, you know. Yeah. So did she isolate all the other women if they don't need a... a Spare change of drawers every time they walk outside? Are they not, not a baddie? It's usually just one pair that you keep in your purse. Why? Just think anything can happen. Mm hmm Y'all don't have vaginas, so y'all don't case understand. case damp down there? I know, that's why I'm asking why. Yeah, sometimes you might sweat. Where do you put the dirty sweat. pair? Back in that bag. You probably like, throw them out. Oh. Mm. I, I mean, feel like you, that's financially irresponsible. You're Those don't look like cheap pants. No, I'm saying like, say, well, I don't know what happens. Say your shit gets damp. And you want to change, and then you're using a clutch like the one Ice Spice has. Are you going to recycle that and put it back in the bag, or are you just going to toss them? I'm sure Ice Spice is tossing. She is. I'm saying the normal girl. And where's like the prime change panty 
time location oh is that like a public restroom is that soho bath soho house bathroom okay what the if you're wearing house jeans bathroom? like with a tight angle? that's accessible <laughs> like what if you're not wearing a dress that day and you need to do that um yeah Demaris. then you gotta do what you gotta do I'm sure there's y'all don't there. change y'all drawers sometimes during the, in the middle in the of the street? day of the day no no, 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 no. Never no so. nobody changes them in the street like I, I don't walk around with a spare pair of underwear Me neither. i mean i'll admit as an adult I've accidentally sharded once and I just I had to raw dog it. As an adult, you, you had, you had denim on your raw ass? Yeah. We talked about and this. your raw, sharp, crusted ass? Yeah, I was walking up for the train oh, to meet my mom for lunch. We've talked about this on the yeah, show. Yeah, we talked about it. I'm, I'm reliving more PTSD. A crane almost fell on me and now you guys are making me tell my shart story. Yeah, again. you shat on yourself. I was walking up from the train and I thought it was a fart and it ended up not being that. So I had to go find a public restroom by Bryant Park <laughs> And I was wearing jeans, and for the rest of the day, I had to raw dog in denim. Why you didn't just go buy a pair of underwear? <laughs> you were in Bryant Park. You there were like 50 bought, underwear. Really there's a, there's an H&M underwear. right there. Yeah, right. you really could have. I was late for lunch. <laughs> I think she would have understood. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you sharding yourself is hilarious, though. Yo, you guys sh- haven't sharded as an adult? No. No. Never. I, I never oh, you guys are so kid. cool. Never sharded on my... As an, as a, as a, I told a story about when I... In high school, I, sh- I shitted on myself. Yeah. I, I was holding it. I thought I could make it. And that, that fucking Ford train just between Burnside and fucking 183, it just stopped. It burnt. Ugh, it burnt. And I was just like, I couldn't hold it anymore. And it was just time to let it go. Well, why as an was, adult, no. Why was this such a story that Ice Spice keeps spare panties? I don't know. It's just because she's Ice Spice. It's, it really is because of that. All right. Ice Spice, new song. Am I being a hater if I think the clock started ticking? Nah, you're not. <laughs> Feels like the clock started ticking. I'm not saying... I don't like it? I'm not a big fan. It's, it's fine. No, it's a good record. It's I'm not saying it's a bad thing. record. Did the clock start? I don't think it's a Is good this record. looking like a baby situation minus the canceling comments? Julian said that too. Yep. That was kind of a... She's a giving the baby. Because we, we, we tried to give us something new with Taylor Swift, which was a stupid idea. And I get, if, if the shit isn't broke, don't fix it. But how long does this work? Uh, I'm not like, saying she needed to have a bunch of growth on this. I'm not saying that at all. Yeah. It's only Even the verses year, start with the exact same words at this point. Yeah. When did Munch come out? I, yeah. I think that- Shia Batty has started the last 10 verses. She's shaking like jelly, but I'm still shaking ass in the deli. This There's is, nothing wrong with it. This so could work, but this how is, long? I mean, it's, it, I think she has- It's a, also not for I her. think she has a lot of time left. Because she's going to she's gonna keep doing the feature route thing. Much is, keep much is with, a, with a bunch old. of artists, and you know that's how that's how you stay alive now. You just keep getting features, keep putting out singles, shoot videos. I mean, that's all it is. But I mean, I guess we kind of assumed when we saw who was behind her that there would be some growth, even down to the Taylor Swift shit that she did so early. We're like, all right, maybe they've seen the ways of other artists that popped off and sounded the exact same, and it just dwindled away. Mm-hmm. That the amount of money that's being invested in her, they're not going to allow that to happen. Doesn't seem like that anymore. No, I seems like they're just hey, go do more of the same. No, they're gonna I, milk her for it, every dollar. Yeah, it's not. It's not. It's not. You got to keep keep going with what's working. But this is just. But a, she's not. She's not like a. And this is going to sound crazy, but fuck it. No one will say it. She's not like a sexy red where it feels like they will just milk what they can out of her and then move the fuck on. It feels like they think there's a future with this girl for the people behind her. Mm-hmm. Her personality is marketable. We can get into the comments that, that Damaris had said that the internet was saying as far as what the light skin thing is. And I'm not going to get Other into that. But we know that is somewhat of a factor with the longevity play. Huge factor. A lot of shit about this girl screamed, we're in for the long haul with her. Yeah. The next record is the exact same fucking song with the same lyrics and the same video. What's the long haul? Define a long haul. That's a good question. Well, I mean, we got to go back and just think about this. Cardi's right? a long haul. The, the, the Okay. Do you Cardi's think, a long haul. Do you think that when they got with Cardi, you think they went in with Cardi for the long haul? I think or at Bodak they make- Yellow, they made a decision. And then after that second record, they decided and said, yes, this is the long haul. This girl has personality. She's marketable. She can sell this shit. People, people like her. That's a huge factor that no one really puts in. She's fucking likable. Mm-hmm. Cardi they switched her sound damn near immediately kept her core with Bodak Yellow sound but immediately gave a bunch of different records and different sound different features 
This girl's doing the exact same it's, song. It's, it's, it's very simple. We overthinking this. If the if the industry decides that they want her to be around long enough, she'll be around be around long enough. True. Yeah. Uh, yes and no, because I think the baby is still around. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think I think those uh, comments he made at Rolling Loud were a convenient time. Mm -hmm. I think that downfall was happening because uh, everything was so much of the same. Mm -hmm. That was going to happen regardless of those comments or not. Uh, so even if the industry says they want to keep you around, if the music doesn't change. This is just a, what is the name of this? Deli? Deli. Mm -hmm. This Good is song. This is, a, this, is, this is like the girl version of Fabio's Weddy. Yeah. Because even in that, he said, I met at a deli. Mm -hmm. She was weddy. Whatever, yeah. whatever. Now, Ice um, Spice uh, comes with he deli. He wants this pussy. I want the Fetty. No, yeah. I'm, I'm with you. So this is, this is, and it almost sounds exactly like Weddy. Well, most drill records sound very similar. Yeah, but, but this, but this sounds like, yeah. More similar no, you're right. to Weddy than you know what I mean? I, I I thought it would. But I mean, it's a good record. It's gonna do what it's gonna do. Girls are gonna shake to it. Um, you know, they're gonna post videos, uh, captions to it, they're gonna post their stories to it. It's gonna do what it's what they want it to do. And listen, maybe I could be completely wrong and open to that because I'm mostly wrong. I get maybe you have boys a liar, and it's like, well, let's bring it back to make sure her core. Still it's still there and let's make the same record again. But Boy's a Liar to me was like, oh, she's here for the long haul. Mm -hmm. But that was a getting the hottest though. girl in London. Like, but well, that's what I'm saying. They're going to keep doing that. They're going to keep going to the feature. Yeah, bag. I was going to say, because that was that was Ice Panthers. Sweet Pink, Pink, Pink Panthers. 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 Sorry. That was Pink Panthers' song Ice Spice featured on it. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no, no. Yeah. But, but still in the drill world, but, you know, a different sound. They just they just remaking the exact same song. I don't know, man. Ski Yi is is hitting. While you was talking shit about sex and grass, I, I said we you know we record these. Wonder. I said Ski Yi is a good fucking song, but I don't. That other record, her feature is awful. They're gonna milk that girl that for shake something. They're gonna milk that girl for what they need from her and move the fuck on. Do you Come think? On. Do you really sexy red? Yeah. And I'm here to hate today. Maybe it's because the crane almost hit me and I deserve it. Yeah, get your is head that, Is that, do we really think Sexy Red is here to stay? Can we be honest with each other? I don't think any of these, I don't think any of these artists are here to stay though. But you can see why Ice Spice could be here to stay versus a Sexy Red, right? And I'm not doing anything complexion, everyone, everyone to relax. Because I know <laughs> it's going to be in the comments. It's nothing to do with that. Colors. Listen, I didn't think that Cardi was here to stay when she first came out. I thought that it was a moment. They were going off of this girl's like popularity online. I was like, okay, dope. Like they're going to make a bag. I was clearly wrong about that. Like, so I could be wrong about Sexy Red. I could be wrong about Ice Spice. I, think I, hope, I, I hope Sexy Red uses this as an intro to her fifth album when I'm wrong and she's the new hove. But <laughs> I just don't, I just don't see it. I think, I don't think she's going to be gone by the end of the I year. Think, don't get, I don't think that. I just think that the game is so different now. Like, it, it's not, a lot of these artists are not, you know, these labels are not behind them to make them like legacy acts. They're, no, they're, they're like, yo, listen, these money. girls are hot right now. They they have, you know, the algorithms. They have, you know, the following, the influence. Um, you know, it's a time where, you know, the ratchet shit is, is, is hot right now. Like the more ratchet you are, you know, the more they, they, they pushing that and they want that. So, you know, I mean, it depends on how long the industry wants to push that is the lifespan of these artists is, is, is what I think. Like if, if, it, if it's like another four years that the industry decides to keep going that way with female rap, then it'll be another four years. I mean, you know, I just think that it's just, you know, we got to stop thinking that it's the same, you know, uh, formula from when we were younger and the artists we were listening to because it's totally different now. They're not looking at these, these artists now to be legacy acts. They're not looking at them to, you know, be some of the greatest rappers and MCs ever. They're not looking at it for that. They're like, they have an influence. They have a following. They're hot right now on, on, on social media. Everybody's, you know, using their lyrics as captions and using their songs to post stories and all of that. Let's keep pumping this shit out. Let's keep giving them a record. Let's keep giving them a feature. And however long the business decides that that's what's lucrative for them, that's the lifespan of these artists. No, I don't think they're looking at it in any MC or lyric talent way. But I do think they are picking and choosing who they think is going to have longevity. I, I think Ice Spice was one of those. She's still in the quote unquote ratchet girl genre to some degree. But I can see how they're handling her a bit different than say uh, 
what's the chick that uh the Osiris kid touched? Suki Hans. Suki yeah, they like, completely she's But I'm saying you can see how they handle artists differently. Mm-hmm. And Ice Spice, I think they're, you know, keeping more polished than the rest. She toes the mainstream ratchet line. Yeah. Like the way Cardi is a masterclass at that. How long do we think before the industry starts a beef between Glorilla, Sexy Red, and Ice Spice? Now, I think, I think the Ice Spice lesson. Lotto beef is already bubbling and that's going to be the next one. That'd be cool. Ice Spice and Lotto? Really? Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. That's a, that's Who does Lotto beef. keep taking shots at in these performances? Nikki. It's yeah, when she I says um, Nikki, the coke shit, she thought I was gonna kiss ass. She must say he took a match. She's Nikki. Yeah, allegedly, I can't speak for anybody, but Nikki. I in no way am I saying Nikki does cocaine because I have no fucking idea. But is coke that big of a deal in this time? Clearly not to Doja. <laughs> yeah, you guys see that video? And to JT, and to oh, like is, and is to cocaine really a thing? It's not. It These kids be. are fucking drinking lean and and doing cocaine fentanyl. is a thing. No, cocaine is a thing. Cocaine is mad chill. No, it's no not. in the hood, cocaine <laughs> is still frowned upon. Cocaine is something that these artists are encountering when they start getting money. But in the hood, cocaine is still frowned upon. People are dying from sniffing cocaine that's laced with fentanyl. Laced, yeah. keyword. You don't know. You don't know what you're buying. I'm, I'm not encouraging. I'm saying it's all bad. But that's what I'm saying. You I'm don't. Saying, you don't know what you're buying. What do you think is more detrimental to the hood? Cocaine and it's just cocaine, Pure. or <laughs> perks, lean, all of it, heroin, all of it, all of that shit, all of it, all of that shit. I don't even but want to why is all right, But coke is an expensive drug. Yeah, but that's the problem is that a lot of people get coke. So right, it's, it's funny that coke is frowned upon in that way when fentanyl for real is cheap and easy to get and is used more by rappers and rapped about in a braggadocious way. These ki- these rappers are not doing straight fentanyl. No, they're not. But they're doing uh, perks with I mean, they, shit in it. They, they, we, the thing is, you have a lot of these, like, you know, we've seen the Mac Miller and we've mm-hmm. seen us lose artists to accidental overdoses because they don't know what's in these drugs. They don't know that these pills are laced with fentanyl. They don't know that this Coke is laced with fentanyl. Michael K., uh, we lost him. He didn't know that it was yeah. fentanyl in the drugs that he was taking. Test your shit. So, yeah, but you say I that, like but if I'm out at a party, it's, it's not... Just test your shit. You I know, I know, know. Yeah. I know, I know. It's circumstantial. I'm well aware of that. Yeah, so As that's what that was. That's why I'm saying it's not that scene. But you, that's what I'm saying. It's it's, but it's dangerous because we know what's out there. Yes. And I'm not advocating yeah, cocaine. Game, I want to make that very fucking clear. I just have watched whether it be the lotto shit or just the whole hip hop community like frowning upon people that do coke while bragging about doing drugs that I think are <laughs> drastically fucking that are worse. way trashier. Like bra- not. Not even trashy, just more dangerous because they're so much more readily available and they're cheaper. I don't think, I don't think that is. It's harder for a kid in the hood to go cop a gram of of Coke than it is to get a perk. Yeah, but the, 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 the dangers are similar. It could be fentanyl in either one of those. Very. But okay. I'm saying. It's actually easier to hide in. Fair. But which one is being bragged about? Pills. Pills. Yeah. That's what I'm getting at. And maybe I'm not articulating myself in the best way because I'm not an advocate of kids doing coke or people doing coke, period. No. But you're shitting on people doing cocaine but bragging about a drug that's just as fucking harmful, if not more harmful, because it's cheaper and easier to get. These kids can't wait to get, I mean, a, perk, I'm not, get I'm, a perk and throw it in their fucking lean or however it goes. I'm not, I'm not the drug shaming guy. Like, you do whatever I, the fuck you want to do as an adult, but... Just know the consequences. I just think it's... I, think, I, just, think it's, I just think sniffing coke is just wild. I think anything you're going to put up your nose to go straight to your brain is crazy to me. To me. They're all wild to me. Popping a pill, you, you take a fucking Claritin. It's the same thing. So and I, and I just, think that's worse because you got to be more fucking committed to go snort something. Yeah. I, Which I think is crazy. Well, I when, think, I was, when I was younger and I was like saw Coke and people do Coke when I was like early in college, I was like, I just can't imagine like putting something on my nose. Like that just the act of that looks crazy. Then you do and then it, I was yeah. addicted to like yeah. seven years. <laughs> it, like it doesn't, I hear you, but like... I just to me I Shit can't I, I can't even take the fucking the allergy medicine when they want you to spray up you know I can't even do that but I, I don't I, want nothing that I have like to saline do. These, I, I can no, I can't these kids are taking heroin in pill form I wish they still had to shoot it in the, their veins no that's because kids are it would keep more people away from it because you actually have to take a fucking syringe and inject it into your bloodstream I don't bloodstream. know if keep people that, away from it go to Kensington Avenue <laughs> in Philly <laughs> that, ass that ain't keeping nobody away from yeah. they shooting that shit straight up Trent okay the amount of 15 year olds do you think would be more scared of syringes or 
able to pop a pill that all their favorite rappers are rapping I, about. I get what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, popping I'm, a pill I'm is making easier. some type of sense. Yeah, popping a pill is, is easier. It's not, it's, you know, it's it's not as, you know, uh, gory and, you know, as, as as injecting yourself, but it gets to that level. It's it's it, My thing is it starts. It starts with the pill, right? And then it's like, okay, then it's, all you need to do is have one friend that actually knows how to cook and shoot up and show you that shit. And I was that, always terrified of pills. Yeah, like, but a, a lot of people are. You know what I'm saying? Until you take a fucking pill, and you're like, oh, that was that was easy. That was simple. Do you guys still have that old school perspective of a uh, bud being a gateway drug? No, no, hell no. I've been smoking weed for years, and I I've never just, fucking that's some thought Reagan about bullshit. doing the other drugs. <laughs> it's dumb never. Shit. It's a really. But I understand the thought behind it. Like yeah. it's like once you start experimenting, it's like, oh, okay. Some people push the line, but it all starts with who has an addictive personality. That's where you got to start. Agreed. But that's marketing because cigarettes are, they have nicotine, like that they're highly addictive, but yeah. the government could. Yeah, because they could make a tax they on make, it. They could tax it. They had the monopoly on it. They didn't know how they couldn't do that with weed yet. So they were like, that's the bad one. That's the gateway. Right. And I could. We, fucking cigarettes are the gateway. You idiot. Easy, right. Easily right. see <laughs> someone smoking cigarettes going to cocaine before someone smoking weed going to cocaine. Yeah. Word. I don't the smoke average weed. I smoke cigarette smoker is way more anxious <laughs> and well, would go to coke. With addicts, with addicts, I understand why they tell addicts to stay away from everything like alcohol, cigarettes everything yeah. because you might smoke weed and get so high you forget to not do heroin or you forget to not have a drink. Oh, I think the alcoholic person would go do heroin before the weed person as well. I think most addicts probably get into hard drugs when they were drinking before smoking weed. <laughs> they get uh, drunk. It, they it get just, drunk and do dumb shit. It's just all about I don't think person, anyone has man. gotten high as shit and been like cocaine. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's just I think, I think it's more so just about the person. It's, it's who you're talking about because it's, it's a bunch of people that, you know, they look at weed and cigarettes all the same. Like, I would never smoke that. You know, I would never do. It. So it's like you just got to think about the person. If you have an addictive personality, you're one of those people that you can't do a little bit of anything. Everything is in, in excess. That's when drugs become dangerous to a person like that, because that person is going to go all the way and they're not going to stay on how to turn it off. Fair. Somebody like me, I could stop smoking weed today and never smoke again in my life. Like I don't need to smoke weed. I enjoy smoking weed. I think it's beneficial for me in certain areas of my life, but I don't need like I don't wake up and smoke. I don't need that shit every day. Like I've I cannot smoke for ten, the next 10 years today if I decide to do that. You know what I'm saying? It just some people they don't they look at me like what? Like I, yeah, they I can't, can't even as soon as I wake up, I got to smoke and I'm like, yeah, I can't. How? Like, how is that the... You want smoke in your face as soon as you wake up? Like, I can't even understand that thought. You know what I mean? But that's just me. So that's what I'm saying. It's subjective. That drug shit is subjective to who you talk about. But when I was, like, really doing, like, a lot... When I was most, like, in the coke shit, that's what, that was the thought process I always had. It was like, I always know my free will. And if I want out, I can get out. But then when you start to actually try doing it, then that's, like, a different story. Because you realize how much of a stronghold the, the drug... Or like the act or whatever it is, the feeling that the drug gives you has on you. So I always lived in that space where I was like, oh, I do it because it's fun. I don't need this shit, though. Mm -hmm. And then I was like realizing how dependent I was on it. Mm -hmm. But then after, you know, however long, whatever, I ended up dude, I ended up going straight up cold turkey. Mm hmm. Well, I'm glad I'm you. Sure. I'm glad you got sure. that monkey off your back. Yes, and, you I'm <laughs> and I'm sure. I'm sure every Aww. every addict ever probably he got thinks the monkey that, off his back. Aww. <laughs> Julian, I'm happy for you. I'm almost three years clean, bro. It's hard. <laughs> Only more would Fuck clown someone mall. for being clean. <laughs> just because just because your family can't sell to me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he got the monkey off his back. <laughs> Edit. He had a monkey on his back. <laughs> Good. Yo, he's the fucking worst. Bro. He's, yo, yo, Julian no, said. But he also don't realize. He don't understand how people became addicts. Meanwhile, his family has been rapping about how they became addicts since fucking 1991. Yeah, because we want to make money and get fresh and fuck these hoes, nigga. We don't want to get high. Like, hey, where did all these addicts come from? Oh, I don't know, because I was selling the best shit. You bragged about it for 20 years. Yo, Julian said. Yeah, no, I was like, you know, I don't need that shit. And then I was all, I just went down a rabbit hole. You know, 
<laughs> you know how many people probably have parents because you guys lost those 92 bricks? That's crazy. <laughs> hey, that was a very fucked up time in your life. <laughs> <laughs> <Very> fucked up. <laughs> you know how many children have parents because those bricks got misplaced? Oh my God. Julian, I'm happy that you kicked No, you're out. not. I am happy for you, man. <laughs> I, I don't want you strung out on coke. I'm happy to make for an interesting <laughs> yeah. podcast. I'm happy that, you know, you're, you're sober. Three years sober. Congratulations. And, uh, you know, I hope you never go back to that white girl. I'm not sober. I still drink a shit ton. I mean, no, I mean, like, you're not on. I did it at Shrooms last weekend. Well, Shrooms is okay. Shrooms are tight. Can we just compile the amount of Jay Z lyrics that rap about fiends and addicts and then just put Maul laughing like, yo, you had a monkey on your back? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You were selling like, highly addictive have drugs. Have you listened to one Jay-Z metaphor? Holy, no, I'm just laughing at, because it's Julian. That's the way I'm laughing, just because just it's Julian. Did you feel bad when you were watching Snowfall? Like About what? The repercussions. <laughs> you like, had guilt? Like, did you have any guilt watching Snowfall? Did I have guilt watching Snowfall? No. <laughs> what the fuck was I having guilt for? You sold drugs before. <laughs> Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. 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 Uh, Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. Yeah. I don't know what she's talking about. No, I didn't have guilt. No, that was um <laughs> No, I didn't have guilt. I, I didn't have guilt from uh watching just, Snowfall. It's part of the system, right? Someone yeah. else someone else would have sold it. Exactly. Right. You're gonna get it from somebody else, you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. no, so you um, believe in the system and absolutely. what holds people back. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um no Snowfall, I didn't have guilt because I know that's it's fucked up, but that's exactly how it goes. Like your your community becomes you know, a victim of your success in that type of game. So it's it's just a real, it's a real thing. But I mean, go deeper. Look at who was bringing it in, right? And why they were bringing it in, like that. That's also part of the story too. It's not just selling it in the hood. It's like how is it getting it? Who's bringing it in? Who's okay in this? Who's getting rich off of this? So no, but like Teddy said, because I'm almost at the end now, guys. I think I'm on the last episode of the of the of the entire thing. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, Damn. How do you like it? I don't like the ending because I feel like they rushed it for some reason. It feels very rushed. You didn't see the ending yet. I'm on literally the last 20 minutes of the episode. And I oh, okay. Knows what, like, it, the, when I see, I mean, like the last season, it feels very rushed. Okay. It feels rushed. Um, I feel like they kind of did Damson how they did Daenerys in Game of Thrones. I feel like he was originally too smart to do all of the things that he Sounds did. Sounds like a whole verse. Mm-hmm. Like he he ended up being too like he was too smart for that. How did he become this person? Like it's just the math wasn't mathing. And everybody told me I was gonna hate Louis. They're like, oh, you're gonna hate Louis. I'm like, y'all just hate women because like everybody in this show is fucked up. I don't hate Louis specifically. Well, the the, the story <laughs> the 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 story is that you know through his life he be, he became an addict of the money, the lifestyle. He became addicted to getting the money. And selling to addicts, selling drugs. So it's like it's a it's a it's a it's like a cycle. It's a circle. Like you become a feed, kind of like yeah, the, the ones we accustomed to selling. selling. Yeah. So that's exactly what it is. So he started disrespecting his mother. You know, she basically gave him his out. His mother deserved disrespect. No wait, what? His mother deserved disrespect. Oh, you got. Well, maybe you got to continue Man, watching the story. She didn't have to kill. No spoilers if you still haven't watched Snowfall, but she did have to. She kill. no, she didn't. She no, she had to kill him. He, she could have let that man get his money first. Yeah, but you're not. Again, this is what you're not understanding. It wasn't going to stop there because it's like, okay, you let him get that money. Then what? He continues doing what he's doing. He continues going down that road. He continues spiraling out of control. He lost everything. He lost his family. Mother lost her brother to the game. Like they watched people in their community die. Their community is torn apart. All for what? For money? So like the mother gave him his out. That was his clear out. Like kill the agent. They don't know that you and him had no, you know, no, no thing together. Like they're not coming after you. It's over. I gave you your out and you're still like, I need that fucking money. I was like, yo, I'm in jail for killing a federal agent. And I did that so that you wouldn't continue down the road you're going. And you don't get that part yet. And now you call him, you bitch, now he's going crazy. Look like a fiend, like an addict that can't get his fix. He can't get that money. He's going crazy. So that's why the mother's looking at him in jail, like not saying that to him, like, yo, you're completely gone. Like, it's no, I did what I did to save you and you still don't even see that. Yikes. Which is why I think that show was uh, amazing because it, it does tell that story, like, He's an addict too. Not just the ones he's selling drugs to. He's an addict. Look at him. Yeah. At what point is that reason a coping mechanism or an excuse? Because I fully believe down to ends people with the contras <laughs> and 
the United States bringing cocaine in and specifically giving it <laughs> to certain people to destroy neighborhoods. I fully, fully believe in that. I don't even think it's a conspiracy at this point. But I have watched interviews with quote unquote kingpins. And a lot of them, when are when they're asked that question, like, do you feel like you destroyed your fucking community? Mm-hmm. They do tell the story of how it brought in, and I agree with them. Is that a coping mechanism? Or is it somewhat of an excuse too? Because those kingpins are some of the smartest people I've ever heard speak. Yeah. So they were very self-aware of what they were doing during that time. Mm-hmm. So yes, this was a system put in place and they were in a fucked up position and you know did what they had to do in a, in a time of what mm-hmm. they thought. There is cases, and it could just be my complexion, that I, I think, yo, know, that sounds kind of like an excuse to some it degree. It is an excuse. What's human nature to justify your actions? Or, or a coping mechanism to some degree, too, of knowing that you destroyed something and then feel a little better, like, all right, well, I was also destroyed. They just put the shit in my hand to mm-hmm. do so. I didn't really know exactly what I was doing. Crack didn't seem like a bad thing when mm-hmm. it came, mm-hmm. then it did. But when it was bad, I think a lot of them were smart enough to knew, like, they know what they were doing. Yeah. And Teddy said that, though. He was like, I didn't give y'all crack. I gave you cocaine. You started selling crack. Mm-hmm. Like, you knew what crack itself, not cocaine, what crack. Yeah was doing and how highly addictive it was and what it could make people do. And you saw your neighborhood crashing in front of you, but mm-hmm. money was more important. If you're If you're in the fucking whatever, the, what, the 80s or the 70s, whatever that was, you have fucking $3 million, $5 million. You don't need an additional 10, 30 million, bro. Mm-hmm. If you're really just in this to take care of your family, get that money, go do something with it. Mm-hmm. You but don't that's need- also hindsight. Like, yeah. If you're yeah. not in that, and I'm more so talking about people like 70s, 80s, because I think people I talked to in the 90s that were involved in that, like the neighborhood was fucked already. Like yeah. you were you were born in, that's all you knew and it was, it was already there. fucked up. So It was already there. Yeah. I'm more so talking like maybe the Rick Ross is a, who that show is based off of. Mm-hmm. Maybe did you, like, did you kind of peep that you were just destroying? I, don't, I, I think that e- Even though the CIA gave you that shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, eh, you did destroy the community. I think I think people know that. I just think that in in it, while they're in it, while it's happening in real time, I just I don't think that they realized the long term effects and uh you know what they were doing because again it was just it's just a lifestyle. Yeah. Every day you wake up, you hustling. But I think now when a lot of those guys look back and you, you'll see them in there when they talk uh, in interviews, they 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 say like, yeah, man, you know it's like we did a lot of damage. And I want to make this damage to the community. clear. It's not just low income neighborhoods and crack. I think bangers go to work every day. Oh, yeah. And know they're destroying much more than crack could have ever fucking done. Absolutely. To people's lives. Absolutely. But I think they're aware and just don't give a fuck. <laughs> oh, no. You have those people, too, though. That <laughs> are very aware, are well, uh, very well aware of what they're doing and just really just don't give a fuck. In the same way Ma was saying, like, if I don't sell, somebody's going to sell it. I feel like that justification is the same thing on the banking side as well it's like oh well, if i don't do this someone else would do so it's like i'm in the position to do the thing that i know isn't good for the greater good of my neighborhood but if i don't do it someone else will so what difference does it make i feel like yeah. that's the justification for a lot of people to just go through with harmful actions yeah and I, I, others i don't know if i was born into some banking fucking family that i would be the one guy that would stand up and be like no yeah or it'd be like here son uh you can make fucking money for the rest of your life and never have a care in the world, and never have to face the people that suffer because of our our work. Yeah, I think it's like the perfect. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know if I would sit there and be like, "No way, Dad!" Like, no, I might be like, "All right, bet." <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. I, I don't know, so yeah. I don't like try to put that on people. Just more so ask questions, because I think we all pretend like we would be amazing people in certain situations because we're outside of those situations. Yeah, you don't know And that. not in so you're in. Yeah, you gotta be in it to really know how you would react and how you would move. It's easy to sit back and watch somebody else's story and say, damn, I would've just got out of the game. Yeah, yeah but <laughs> when, like, you know, when you know that you fucking, you can make $3 million a week, it's hard to turn that faucet off. Right. Yeah, and I don't think I would have the balls to be the old guy in New Jack City and be like, stop it, Nino Brown. Right, yeah, no. <laughs> no, nah, I'd probably just go about my way. Or try to find a way to get out of that yeah. That neighborhood, yeah, for sure. Uh, changing gears here. Uh, rest in peace to Tafari Campbell, um, the Obama's personal chef that drowned by their home in Martha's Vineyard. Um, there hasn't been too many details that have been put out uh, other than I think 
a paddleboarder that was nearby said they saw him go under, tried to get to him, but didn't get to him in time. Uh, rest in peace. Of course, this has brought more and more conspiracies. We don't really need to go down that route, but yeah, know. I saw I saw some of the conspiracies floating around online. I don't I don't you know. Of course, that's going to happen if somebody is working close to a former president. Um, conspiracies are going to start to fly and things like that. But you know, I, I don't pay attention to that. It's you know, it's a sad story. Uh, gentleman lost his life. Um, conspiracies aside, probably was literally just a a swimming accident. It happens um, all the time, more often than people probably even know. Do people, you know, die in the water? So uh, rest in peace to Tafari Campbell. And, um, you know, I'll leave it at that. I'm not getting into that whole conspiracy shit, though. Yeah, and even though this has been a conspiracy uh, pod, I don't, I don't really... <clears throat> I don't see a conspiracy here. Mm -hmm. No matter what uh, political party this was attached to, this could be a Trump, this could be whoever. Right. This seems like just a tragedy. This is an, <laughs> an accident honest. in the water. It happens. Unfortunately, uh, it sucks that he his widowed uh, a wife and, and two uh, twins, um, and it sucks that their dad's name is just being dragged through this now stupid this stupid like circle of conspiracy, and they're not even just like looking at the man; they're looking at the implications of what this could mean for the family, the right. family, and the hit list, and all this bullshit. Yeah. And I mean, like like I said with the Carly shit, I'm guilty of it too. When you hear these stories, you immediately can't wait for the Netflix series. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like when you hear this, you just think like, oh yeah, the chef must have just overheard a conversation when he was chopping up vegetables. Like, yeah. no, that's I don't no, that I don't know, but I don't think that's like how that goes. It doesn't happen like that. No, it's just. But again, we understand that that's what's going to happen when somebody works. Close to the president. So. Hey, I just feel like if you're talking about classified shit, you just don't do it when someone's boiling pasta. No, next it to you. doesn't happen like that. <laughs> I just, I just don't think that's how it, <laughs> it goes. Definitely doesn't happen like that. Um, but speaking of Carly as well, she came out where a lawyer did rather and said uh, she did not see a baby on the side of the road. There was no kidnapping. Um, she just, you know, wants to apologize and wants people to move past it. Uh, I'm shocked this hasn't gotten into more of a mental health discussion immediately. Um, but, but you know, part, but part of me, as a mental health advocate, I am kind of happy it didn't go there right away. Not to say mental health is is not an excuse for certain things, but I think if we immediately forgave her, this gives more people ammo to just go do and say shit, knowing that they're going to get caught and be wrong and be like, "Nah, yo, crazy, nah. I'm bipolar." Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm happy that we didn't run and just be like, well, her mental health. Yeah, I'm sure there that's a factor here. I well, don't think is, I don't think anyone makes this lie up without some mental health problems, but people still need to be accountable for the shit that they cause, no matter what your mental health state is to some degree. Because there's plenty being, of people that'll go do this and be like, well, I know I'll get away with it. They are present charges, correct? I would hope so. Yeah, the police are looking to do. Yeah, they're investigating how they want to move forward. There is a there is a room. There's not a rumor. There's a conversation online because everything's about race. They're saying if this was a white girl, do you think they would? The police would have just like chalked up and been like, okay, like just don't do it again, kind of thing. Well, I, I don't know about that, but no, I don't think so. Um, I do think that she should face some some sort of consequences for this because there are actual black women being uh, kidnapped and abducted. Um, every day. Um, and I think to, you know, have people thinking that you were another victim and, you know, people really being concerned and prayers and all of this other stuff to come to find out that this was all just some shit that you just made up and a hoax. Mm. I think there should be some type of, she should, there should be some consequences to this. Yeah. People need to know that you can't joke about being abducted, um, being kidnapped, seeing a baby wandering on a highway by itself. Like, those are not things to play with. You don't joke around with shit like that. So um, I think that, yeah, she needs to face some some sort of consequences. I'm not saying throw the woman in jail, but um, she definitely needs to, to, to face some type of consequence. So they do set the tone of this will not be tolerated yeah. and there are consequences to uh, actions like this. So, and again, all in the name of the actual women that are abducted and are kidnapped and mm -hmm. babies that are kidnapped and things like that. So- we don't have time to be looking for somebody that's not kidnapped 
and wondering if they're okay when there are actual women and children that are kidnapped. So there needs to be some some ramifications for this. And you, you know, you see oh, yeah. it with mass shooters outside of pure hate. A lot of times their goal is for attention and to be on the news as that martyr. Mm -hmm. This is a way now for people to do shit without those type of consequences. And if they can just, you know, I don't have to shoot anyone. I, my name could just be everywhere and everyone care about me today. Mm -hmm. And I just have to make something up and it's just a slap on the wrist. Yeah. Bet. Can't wait. Yeah. Can't wait to make something up. Do you think there should be ramifications outside of the like the legal ones that she broke? So meaning falsifying a police report and then maybe having to make up and pay for time and resources of the Hoover Police Department that had to like go search and do all that stuff. So, do you think there should be stuff in addition to those charges or Well, that's where it's tough because even like with the the Jesse situation and if you watch the doc too with the prosecutors, they were like, "Yeah, we wanted to give him a lot of time, but at the end of the day, he really only broke one law, yeah. and that was falsifying a police report, yeah. which, is which like in some like cases is like a little bit of community service. Mm -hmm. yeah. So as much as you want these people to get more time because their crime is far bigger than someone just giving a little white lie to the cops, yeah, it, yeah, there needs to be a, a different degree. I agree. Somehow there needs to be something, but yeah. no, she, she, all she did was falsify a police report uh, the and lie to the police. Carly? Yeah. At the end of the day, so if she gets nothing, I fully understand it, but I, yeah. I think it should be much more than that. Yeah, no, she definitely, it should be some consequences to this, only again because th this is a real thing that happens. Um, this is going to sound really ignorant, but what a win for boyfriends and ex-boyfriends across the world. Let's go. The amount of times we have just wished the world would know how crazy this bitch was. Hot boy summer. He finally can say to everyone, yo, I told y'all this bitch was crazy. Mm-hmm. What a win for him. Yeah, no, this is, he's definitely, uh, prayers to him, because I can only imagine the shit that he goes through in a relationship with somebody like this. Like, the uh, amount of group chats, the amount of family members of like, yo, I tried to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> you know how many times she said, yo, she, she caught him texting a bitch? She, she lied about seeing a baby on the side of the road walking, and <laughs> you know she said something about, yeah, I saw you texting some girl, like, what are you talking about? Yeah, what a win for ex-boyfriends everywhere. Yeah. Uh, with that said, what a perfect time to get into voicemails, <laughs> right? A relationship segue. Yeah, why not? All right, let's start it up. You know how many men have probably wished that like the world would just know. Yeah, they try to tell us. <laughs> they try to tell the world, and the world is like, yeah, that's, you making up crazy. Yeah, you know, they, like, yo, they what, love what, you what did you do? Yeah, like, like, no, like, all right, I've done shit, but this time I'm telling you, this yeah, bitch is crazy. I had nothing to do with this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's all gonna be like that. Hey, you guys. I'm from Southern California. I absolutely love the pod. And I have a question about rebounding from a situation where your trust has been broken, where you've been betrayed, whether that's, you know, professionally, platonic relationships or romantic. What are some ways that you move on from that to then begin to trust? Uh, in particular for Maul, uh, you know, you were hurt um, by a former friend quite significantly. And I wonder if it's, if you have a hard time trusting Rory in business because what you've been through. <laughs> the fuck did I get brought into I this? I feel like you move, you know, more to yourself. You don't hang out with the rest of the group. I wonder if that's a protective mechanism because mm. if you don't get close mm -hmm. to others, then you can't be hurt again. Damn. And I wonder how you you know, are going to overcome that. Uh, yeah, if on. in fact those are protective mechanisms, how are you going to kind of let go and, uh, and let love in, um, or let friendship, <laughs> in, Lori, love you. et cetera. Yeah, in you. Uh, curious to hear the rest of the group's take <laughs> as well. Um, thanks for answering the question and keep going. You guys, I really want to see you on tour this year. Take care. Let's All talk right. about well, two, two things. Is. Do you mind if I start? <laughs> she ain't asked you to. No, no, she asked number you. one, no, I'm going to clean it up real easy. Number one, Maul has the passwords to every Chase bank account that him and I have together. <laughs> <laughs> if there's anything untrustworthy, he can just log in. Right. That's true. Yeah, but who has the face Number two, idea? how was I not also a victim? You were a victim too. That was funny. What the fuck? I yeah. swear out about you. Um... Yeah, but can you trust Always you? women from South I don't know what she asked, but well, what question to uh, How do you move on from... Yeah getting your heart broken whether it be or being That's betrayed crazy. whether it be a friend oh uh, you just no well you move on you just uh pay attention to signs 
and patterns and things like that. So Sorry, I think that's what anything, whether it's a personal relationship, whether it's business relationships that go wrong. You never been caught off guard though. Of course, I mean, I'm clearly, human. everybody's been caught yeah. off guard. We talking about that's why I say you. <laughs> yeah, pay but attention. seeing science seems a little easier than done. No, but you well, after after happens, you've been caught off guard, yeah, got it. You start to replay things and patterns in, in your mind. And so you just pay attention to those moving forward. Um in both business and personal relationships, I guess. That's how you do it. Just apply patterns and signs and energy and, and just pay attention to that and you know, just keep that in the back of your mind. But moving on is a healthy thing. You you have to move on. I mean, th- things happen to everybody. Everybody's been through shit. Everybody's been through some terrible situations and business and romantic relationships, you know, it happens, but that doesn't stop you from experiencing and, and moving forward and having different relationships through life. So yeah, just, just pay attention to the signs and move forward. And I don't hang out with the crew as much because I don't think people understand one, the age gap and two, just like the party scene is like trash now. It's not trash. None of us be partying no more. Like yeah. what? we don't be ha- when we're hanging out together. We're not at parties. Oh, like together, not so much. Yeah, but no, yeah. Not, I'm not saying I together. Don't. I'm just saying like I don't, I don't hang out. I don't go out at all. Like don't. I don't go to no parties. I don't go. I go to dinners and that's it. Or he has a child now. Also, or, with or the last pod, now. Maul didn't hang out either. It's not like it. it yeah, I was changed. Say that wasn't new. <laughs> I just that's what I'm saying. I don't. I don't hang out. Like I don't go out and. Kick it in random places. Mall comes when he, when it matters. Yeah, like if I have to, if it's pause. something that I absolutely, whoa, yeah, pause. That was I got ye haram. There you go. <laughs> um, but yeah, if it's something that's like I need to be there, like that's like something that I absolutely should be at, then yeah. But if it's just like yo, so and so is spinning tomorrow, not, not you, Eden, but so and so is spinning. Wow. That goes without wow. saying. <laughs> just saying, wow. he's the only one that's tomorrow wow. night. Like we should go check. I'm probably not gonna do that. Wow. But if it's like if Damaris is having a birthday dinner, uh, of course I'm there. If I have a birthday party, will you come? Because I'm thinking about it. And also, what if I'm spinning uh-huh. the birthday party? I don't know about a party. That's great. You want to come to my birthday party? I get it, though. Uh-huh. I get what you, I get it. I, I get it. Nah. He's old, man. Wow. I'm not old. I'm just like, it's. You well, I am old, but I'm just not. <laughs> Damn, Eddie. I'm birthday. sorry. I'm not saying that in a mean way. I'm saying, like, I get it. He's kind of past that his kind prime. of function. It, yeah. Party no, not his prom. prime. See? Like, I didn't I'm past that. my. That was crazy. No, I meant, like, like that, for that's partying. Fuck, nah, that's fucked up. For partying. Party. No, but that, I'm just saying, like, that's fucked up. Yeah. Past your party. Like, I'm just saying, I feel like that's fucked up. He's expired? Yeah. I wouldn't hang out with you if you said that to me. Yeah, I'll take that personal. Yeah, you want me to come to your birthday party? You think I'm past my prime? Well, you just said you don't do parties. What you gonna do? You wanna tell your friends, yo, he's past his prime. Don't, don't mind him. him. He's don't past mind his him. Prime. Yeah, don't you don't hold no conversation with him. His prime is was 20 years ago. Like what the fuck? He's got Alzheimer's. Yeah, like what am I over here? Like <laughs> chopped liver? What the you're fuck? The is old hoe at the party. This shit is crazy. <laughs> old man. At the party. Yeah, no, I just I don't know. Just that that party shit. But of course, I'll go to your birthday party. Thank you. It's it's, it's Damaris. Roy, what about it's you? Mad How far you? away. Then? No. Yeah. Didn't it just happen? Her birthday yeah, just like your birthday kind of just happened. I know what I'm saying in the future. It's just like okay. hypothetically, will you come to a birthday party of mine? Well, would you come to my birthday party? You know, that pause was crazy. <laughs> yeah, that cadence was just you like did that on purpose. What What's wrong with you? What are you talking about? On purpose. That's your name. Rory, how do you handle moving on from previous heartbreak, whether it be platonic, uh, friends, anything? Heartbreak, deceit. Oh, I'm, I mean, I'm stealing Maul's answer. You look out for red flags. Yeah. And just act accordingly. Because at some point you want to like trust again. Being that fucking person that doesn't trust anyone and is always on guard there is more detrimental than being fucked over, I feel like. Yeah. Just always having to move around like that is not a world I want to live in. So yeah, I'm, I'm still down to trust just with boundaries. Do you just trust gonna, the team you have now? Hmm? You trust the team you have now? Hmm? Of course. <laughs> yes. I, 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 I definitely. Hmm? <laughs> I think reflection's a big thing too. Not just moving forward, but like I have a good friend of mine. She just went through a really bad breakup and she was opening up to me and talking to me about those things. And while she was like still fresh and vulnerable, she's like crying a lot and we're talking through stuff. And I suggest, I was like, you should write down because she, her plan is to like disappear from the city for a couple months. And she's like, I just need to get out of the country. I need to be somewhere else. I'm like, yeah, but like that's one way to just let time heal, but you're not really addressing the issue because this is also someone that she broke up with before and then got with. There's just a pattern here. I'm like, you're not learning why this isn't working in the first place if you don't acknowledge it. 
not only say it out loud to me, but like write it down. Like, hey, I get angry at myself or at him because of A, B, and C. So you can see it and avoid it moving forward. Like, I feel a lot of people just lean into like the time will take care of it, but you're not really addressing that actual problem, which means you can fall into it again with another person, whether it be a relationship, work, whatever the case may be. Yeah. Addressing those red flags is much better than just going to Italy. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> you, you, can do both. Both. you can do both. Right. Of course you can yeah. do both. A change yeah. of scenery is good sometimes just to relax for a second, but going to Italy and then coming back, not healed any way except for what you saw in Italy. <laughs> it's not really that helpful. It's not optimal. Yeah. No. So, no. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm glad she asked Maul that. <laughs> <laughs> Roy almost got hit with a crane today. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah what the fuck? It's a metaphor. emotional crane. Sorry. <laughs> An emotional crane. It's like cranes in the skies. Yeah. Mm. No, no, no. Sometimes I don't want to feel those metal clouds. Exactly. Mm. This next one's kind of sick. You could fuck it away. What? Uh, <laughs> yep. Sleep it away. This next one's sick, you said? I'm just going to say preemptive pause. Okay. Here we go. What's up, Roy and Ma and the whole crew, and especially Damaris, what you said, say. But I just got a quick question. <laughs> so, my girl, she, <laughs> how can I say this? My girl, when we had sex sometimes, she be like sore. So she be talking about like, it's just, it's just too much to take in certain positions and stuff. And Maul, I know you are eight, you know, Roy, on, on, you may not understand. But <laughs> Pause. How can I get my girl more comfortable with taking more than she's, <laughs> she's taking before? If y'all get what I'm saying. No, I'm trying to keep it hip hop. I'm trying to keep it. You're hip-hop. not. You're not. Hey, and, and that's it. Why you ain't asking? And, and okay, okay Mr. Asking Big Dick. People who don't yeah. have pussy. Yeah, you should ask the man. Well, as a fellow A, you can you feel his struggle. Wow, 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 uh, wow. Uh, listen, wow. man, I, you know, I just make sure your girl is, uh, I guess, lube her up. Is you know she's 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 ready. Everything the juices are flowing, um, and it doesn't. You don't want to hurt your girl while you're having sex. That's, that's the not thing. the objective. That's, that's not the objective. It's hurt her. <laughs> like such a selfish question. Yeah, it's like you want to just. You sound like no foreplay. Just put her in doggy and just go to work. Yeah, like just you know talk to talk <laughs> like to her. Nothing about see that. what she likes. That's probably see what positions deal. are best for her that feel the best to her, and just you know go that route. Like I don't. Like that's the most simple way to just ask your girl what doesn't hurt you. How does it like what feels better for you? Like that's yeah. simple. You gotta know when to fap and when not to fap. Wait, what? Fap you know the fap. No. You know when you go crazy for a second. Wait, that's oh, fap. Like, I the, thought the fap. fapping was beat. Fap was fap being off. Jerking off. Yeah. yeah. I'm talking about the fap noise. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, like yeah. when ass hits yeah. pelvic bones. Yeah, no, she yeah, just ask your girl what <laughs> position to her is <laughs> is best, I guess. Because some girls have, you know, they have very small, you know. Vagina, Holes. and they can't. Yeah, they can't. You know, they, you're hurting them, and that's not. Men have this weird thing that they think that if a woman's in pain, that means like they doing their thing, they putting it down. No, like, no, 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 no. It's like no, no, no like no. you're hurting, ruining a, an experience that's supposed to be pleasurable. Yeah, yeah. like what are you doing? <laughs> you're a dickhead, <laughs> sir. Maybe you should eat some pussy for a second. Yeah, yeah. Like, just, yeah. just you know, kind of just yeah, put down the hookah. Yeah, ask ask her what is best for her. <laughs> which position even... she enjoys? Like, yeah, sir. So the the. That everything in the vagina relaxes and expands with the more comfortable that she is. That's why they always tell, well, you guys don't know, but when you go to the gynecologist and your knees are up in the stirrups, it's the most awkward position you can be in. But they tell you deep breathe and relax because then your pelvic floor drops, it expands, and it's a lot easier for anything to be inside of you. So number one, you have to be creating a comfortable like mode that has to be set and you need to be foreplaying and not just quick kissing two pussy licks for playing. I mean, like foreplay starts throughout the day. Foreplay starts when you wake up. Like it's a whole relaxation thing that happens over time. So you have to create that environment for her, create that environment for her body and her body will naturally relax. Um, and like Maul said, talk to her about what positions feel good to her. You might not be able to get them fast back shots off. Like you might not be able to do that with her body. You no, might have to, to throw do a her face to the pillow and go to work. You might have to, she might have to be on top so that she can control how much of you goes inside of her. Like there's multiple things, but you guys should be talking about this amongst each other. Um, and you sound like you got big dick syndrome and that's not a good thing. And you should fix that. You should cheat. Big dick syndrome? Was, I don't know. What Men with big dicks um, think Clearly just, said they, I they grew up with big dicks. It's the same thing as pretty girl syndrome, right? How you guys said that pretty girls have no personality. 
because they just grew up pretty. They never really had to work for it. Yeah, we don't dick, walk around with our dicks up. Yeah, but, but, no, but you can see one. No, but big dick dudes, they know they have a big dick, so they never put the effort into trying to please a woman because society has just told them that since they have a big dick, everybody's going to want them and they're always going to please women. Mm -hmm. That's not the way that it works. Oh, okay, gotcha. So, yeah. All right. It's a tough gotcha. syndrome. Damn. BDS. Shout out Genetics. to all of, I guess. <laughs> BDSs. Yeah, BDS. Two strays in a row for me on these. Yeah, yeah that voices. was not Jesus Christ. that wasn't intentional. I realized that after. I don't know, man. The yeah, you got you had Well, you vet these voicemails, yeah. so I think No, but like I didn't realize you know. until we went back to back that they and both Maris just... asked me if I trust the crew. <laughs> <laughs> See, look, this is why he does it. Damn. This next one is uh this is pretty dicey. This is not a shot at Rory. Which I'm sure. Yo, what's up, Rory and Mom? 100%. Um, just got a quick question. Um, uh, currently seeing someone, um, who happens to be one of my friends' ex. Here we go. Uh, they're divorced now, but, um, I'm also That's wild kind of talking nice. to his sister and this is fake. This is fake. she's, she's in a polyamorous relationship, um, oh. situation. So, and I am too. And what? I just wanted to ask, like, is there a way that I can maintain both of the, those relationships or is that like a conflict of interest? <laughs> <laughs> you live in like a town of like 10 people. I like, think he wanted us to hear his voice because that's not happening. I think one, Did you want to hear one this is fake. So he's in a relationship but also dating Probably his homeboy's ex-wife <clears throat> and his homeboy's sister. Sister, yeah. Maybe he got it like that. Why are you hating? Could be BDS, big dick syndrome. This is fake. This is fake. Why? Why y'all hate? What is stupid? Uh, is this comp Is this a compromising situation? <laughs> yes. I mean, I think he. I think that part was rhetorical, but I think he genuinely wanted your opinion on it. You're not in a, a polyamorous friendship. You can't fuck your friend's ex wife and his sister. I mean, you can't. At this point, you fucking the friend too. That's off it. I mean, you don't know where they are. They could be in the part of the country that does that shit. The United States. I don't want to put a name yeah, but on that's it. Just, they always that's get just mad. some wow shit to be a part of, though. <laughs> it's like. Like, come on. How much wild shit you want going on in your life? <laughs> Apparently a lot. And I feel like your wife or your girl, whoever you're in the polyamorous shit with, would be like, hey, maybe don't fuck your homeboy's uh, ex-wife and sister. Either way, again, I think this is fake, but kind of self-explanatory. Don't fuck your homeboy's ex-wife and his sister. That's nuts. Well, that, don't well, fuck well, either, well, to be well, quite well, honest. Well, but that, They still homeboys? Because <laughs> I don't think they are. Like you can't fuck my ex wife and, and my, my sister. sister. And be like, Yo, that's my homeboy. Shit. I don't. I'm no. I'm gonna punch you in your fucking face next time I see you. Well, where does where is the sister line? I've never dated one of my homeboy's sisters before. Me neither. But that is a bit more accepted and common than fucking your homeboy's ex girlfriend yeah. or ex wife. Yeah, that's sick. And then doing both is because I mean I think the sister thing if y'all grow up together is a little more accepted. Yeah, it happens. That's that's easy. I don't think that's weird. No, uh, ex-wife is crazy. Is is ridiculous. <laughs> now people be real like real protective of their sisters from their friends. Well, if my like, friend, Ma, you didn't let your friends date your sister growing up, did you? Uh, depending on who the friend was. Yeah. If it was like one of the cool friends that I knew wasn't no dog ass nigga, <laughs> then I was cool with that. <laughs> But if it was like my homeboy that I know is a fucking yeah, piece of shit, I'm, yo, your fam, don't even, it's not happening. Yeah. Don't even try. Like my, first of all, my sister wasn't letting it happen. Like she, cause she knew who my dog ass friends were. Mm -hmm. So they, my sisters wasn't going for that. But if it's like a cool friend and like he got his shit together and I know he's a good guy, I might advocate for her that. Like, yo, like this is the type of guy you need to be, you know what I'm saying? Like he's, he adores you. He, you know what I'm saying? He's had a crush on you since y'all were kids. Like, got his shit together. He's not out here just dogging women. Like, this is the guy you should at least go on a couple dates with and just see if something comes of it. But you know you got them friends that you just like, your fam, I don't even think about it. Yeah, y'all. And maybe that's... Me? Well, no, maybe that's why I've never dated one of my friend's sisters because I was a piece of shit. Oh, see, shouldn't, that, have, shouldn't have been anywhere near that. That's honest of you. See? <laughs> but also, yeah, I wouldn't want to do that because it would run... That'd be like, crazy to like yeah. fuck over your homie sister. Yeah. Like, Nah. What you mean? Like, you can't skeet and skedaddle like one of your homies. Skeet and skedaddle. No, like, 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 you can't do that saying. to one of your homeboys. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. If you that type of that, if those are your intentions, then that's no, crazy. you should not you be should doing never, that to yeah. your homeboy's sister. Like, no. You should if you're gonna if you're gonna you should do it to someone else's sister. Yeah, exactly. 100 percent If you're gonna date if you're gonna date your homeboy's sister, like 
at least let it be something real. Like, and you really into this girl and you really like want something with her. Don't just try to just pump and dump. Like, don't just do that. Skedaddle. Yeah, that's crazy. To your homeboy sister? Come on, man. Like, how much respect do you have for your boy? Ram and scram. Yeah, like, don't do that. I like it. <laughs> yeah, but uh, this dude, what's his name? I don't even know his name. It, the thing says it's from Timothy Jones, but... That's a fake name, too. That's, fake. <laughs> that's not his name? There's no one named Jimothy yeah, Jones. Don't, don't. <laughs> I'm sure there is, but that ain't him. Yeah, don't, don't, don't. You should not be dating your homeboy's ex-wife. And if you're, date, if you're willing to date your homeboy's ex-wife, you definitely shouldn't be dating his sister. And y'all are not friends. Let me just put that out there. So stop calling him your homeboy. This is messy. Yeah, I feel like homeboy ain't really friends though, right? No, that's if I no, say that's my homeboy, homeboy, that's my yeah. that's my friend. That's definitely my friend. It's my homeboy. Like we from home. Like we grew up together. Uh, I mean, at at this point, he's just an associate that got the hose. Yeah, mm. and it just so happens to be an ex wife and his sister. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, so he's just your man that knows has the hose. He got sisters. Yeah, he got sisters, and you, he thought his ex wife was attractive. That's not your. It's <laughs> not your friend though. It's not your homeboy. Don't call him that. Um, do we have any followers for Patreon? Uh, we we might. I believe okay. so. We we can. Ooh. We can, well, let's we can find one. Let's get to Patreon. Get some follow ups from. Uh, yeah, let's check to see if we have uh, any follow ups, and we'll go over them on. We'll go through them on Patreon because I know we has a few of them. No more lies from Jimothy John. Yeah, Jimothy John. Jimmy Johns. <laughs> knock, knock it off. Uh, before we before we close this episode, uh, we do want to send prayers and condolences to uh to Gilly. Yes. yes. And his entire family. Uh, Gilly lost his oldest son. Uh, last week, um, you know, it's, it's a tragic story, tragic situation for the for the family, a tragic time for the family. Uh, we want to just, you know, pray that they're covered in prayers and strength and guidance through this, you know, this tough time. Um, and yeah, hopefully, you know, they just they just find a way to 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 you know come together as a family, even stronger and even closer. You know, you know, death brings families together and. It's unfortunate, but that's just something that happens in our community. Um, but hopefully, you know, this brings the family together and this keeps the family together because this is a this is a tragedy for any father, any mother to have to bury their child, uh, especially due to gun violence. Yeah. So, um, we want to send prayers and love to Gilly. Uh, strength, strength. Everything. We with you. We praying for you. Praying for your family. Words can only do so much. So yeah, just just I, I hope that we can send as much strength as possible. You know, Wallow's been putting out a lot of good words surrounding the situation. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the best words you can give in a situation like this. Um, so at least happy that we know he has someone like Wallow and his family around him. Yeah. In a time like that. But but yeah, prayers to the entire family over there. Yeah. It's, it's, it's sad times, man. Sad it's times in our sad. community. Um, I don't know how long we got to keep going through shit like this, but, you know, it's just always a reminder of how fragile life is. And, um... And how much we need to love each other more. You know, killing each other, is, that's, that's corny. That shit is played out. Um, we need to try something different. But um, either way, that aside, continue prayers and continue strength to the to the family, um, to Gilly and his family. Sure. Um, also, we want to send prayers to the James family. Uh, Brownie suffered a cardiac arrest a few days ago, working out. Uh, Ba at basketball practice mm. um so he was he had to uh be taken to the hospital uh so we want to send prayers and and strength to Bronny um and the James family and uh hopefully Bronny is 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 back to full strength and everything is okay and he can get back to doing what he loves what he's destined to do uh what he um you know and just just having fun as a kid in college yeah. Uh, hopefully, this doesn't hinder him or hinder his career and his path in any way, or his confidence too. Just or his confidence. Yeah. Just hopefully, you know, this is just a bump in the road and something that they can get past. So, um, prayers to Bronny James and um uh, and the James family. And hopefully, the research that comes from this can can prevent it because it's you know not a current occasion that this continues to happen with athletes, but it has been weird. Over the past two years, three years, mm -hmm. the amount of young athletes that have been going into cardiac arrest. Yeah. So, you know, I hope the research continues so we can get out of it. But yeah, glad he's okay. All right. Well, it's been another ride, Rory. Yes. Another audio adventure. Another video. Voyage. Ah. <laughs> Voyage. There we go. Um, I got news for you. <laughs> um, 
with that said, we have uh, some uh, Patreon stuff coming this this week. Yeah. Um, we also have a new venture. If you're listening to this uh, in audio form mm -hmm. today on our YouTube page, we have our, our first. How do you want to word it? I, I guess our first episode of the My Karma is Beautiful platform mm -hmm. with the talented Black Odyssey live performances that we're now adding on to our show. Shout out um, to Black Odyssey for kicking off the uh, first episode of My Karma is Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Um, another platform that we created to showcase some of the artists that we love and the artists that we think are dope and um, and just have like a jam session. Yeah. So um, check that out now. Available on our YouTube and uh, let us know what y'all think in the comments. Yep. And um and look forward to more of that because we are gonna we are gonna uh, start to do more of those. We already have another one in the can that we'll announce at a later date. Um. So yeah, check out my karma is beautiful now. Merch is still available. NewRoryInMall dot com. Um. Patreon. Subscribe. Ram radios out this week. Ram radios out this week. Mm -hmm. And um. Yeah, man. Y'all have a safe weekend. Trying to find ways to get around that copyright shit. Yeah. Because we want to give you guys like our quote unquote sleeper pick shit that we yeah. used to do, but copyright ruins that. So, so it's it's just Ram Radio. My Karma's Beautiful is our way of of getting around those those laws. Right. <laughs> so trying to get around the, trying to get around the, the legalities of all of this music music shit. So um, enjoy the weekend. Have fun. Uh, summer. What we got? Five weeks left. Probably less now. Yeah. Almost almost four weeks left. Enough. Enjoy it. Have fun. Be safe. We'll talk to y'all soon. I'm that nigga. He's just ginger. Peace. No.